Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Watch Along, where you get to watch the EuroLeague Game of the Week. I'm your host, Anthony Goods, representing Swish Cultures. And we got a very, very special guest today, guy that's played. He's touched probably every level, every corner of the earth, <laughs> rebounding, dunking, doing a little bit of everything. Please give a nice EuroLeague welcome to my man, Ghani Lawal. Ghani, what's good, bro? Man, how are you, brother? Thanks for having me. Uh, fans worldwide, hope everybody's doing well. Happy New Year to everyone, everybody. Yeah, yeah, happy New Year to everybody, man. And what better way to, to start the new year with this game that we have before us? We got Barcelona, Milan, two, uh, two juggernaut teams, you know, teams that sure. you uh, even played with or against. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with uh, with both of them. So uh, we got a really nice uh, – Really nice lineup for today, but I want to remind everybody back home, if you're watching, please go to EuroLeague.tv. You can sign up and watch this game that we're about to watch. We got a promo code, WatchAlong10. That's WatchAlong and the number 10. You'll get 10% off of uh, this game and pretty much every other game for the rest of the season. And But it does exclude those of you that live in Italy and Spain, but... Uh, please leave questions in the comment section on YouTube. I got it right here. I'll read them off if you got any questions for, for either one of us or if you just want to let us know who you guys are uh, are repping for the game, you can uh, let us know there too. And, uh, you know, a as always, we're taking all predictions. We're taking all predictions. And, uh, you know, we'll see who, uh, who knows basketball the best at the end of this. But, um, you know, just a quick recap. Uh, Barcelona's number one in the standings. Milan's number six. Uh, Barcelona holds an edge in this series, eleven to uh, to seven. They're coming off of a off a loss in round eighteen. They lost to Basconia uh, on the road, you know, which uh, ended up snapping a, a nine game winning streak. So, you know, I know they're uh, I know they're they're definitely gonna be trying to get back to their winning ways, man. But one thing I always say, you can't you can't bet against uh, Miritich. <laughs> no, Miritich is gonna come with it. That's not good money. <laughs> <laughs> not not at all, man. I think he's uh he's he's definitely a guy that's gonna um that, that's capable of putting the team on his back. And uh, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure he's gonna try to get them to uh to win in ways. And you know, on the flip side, Milan has not played since uh since round sixteen. But as we know, you know, they're loaded with talent. You got Nicolo Melli, Kyle Hines, Sergio yeah. Rodriguez. They're uh they definitely got a strong team and uh you know, here they are training uh, according to their to their Twitter page. We got a clip of that. Yeah, so you know, uh, is that uh, does that bring back some memories that, uh, from the Milan practices? <laughs> oh yeah, man. Oh yeah. Actually, uh, things have actually changed because they actually practice at the arena now. We used to practice at a spot. A lot of my okay. old Milan guys know called Lido. It's a park, and uh, it was a practice facility. Okay. But um, a lot, a lot of great. We'll, we'll get through it through the night, but I'll rehash some of them. A lot of, a lot of great memories in Milan, man. Made a lot of history, made a lot of friends, coaches, players, fans. So Italy was all, Italy will always be a, hold a special place in my heart, um, just as a country. So oh, yeah. um, I'm definitely nah, for sure, looking forward man. to tonight. Yeah, no, nah, I think it's gonna be a, I think it's gonna be a good game, man. It looks like the uh, the starting fives are off. Are, are in uh, Leprovitola, Hayes, Davis, Curich, Miritich, and Davies from Barca, and then you got Grant, Rodriguez, Melly, Bentel, and uh, and Hines on the other side. Man, I think uh, I think I, I've been really impressed with Nicholas Leprovitola um, over the course of the season. Man, he's been a uh, he's been playing you know really well, but I mean even the young boy off the bench, you know, you can buy this yeah. man. He's a uh, <laughs> He's tough, you know what I mean, and I, I think it's been, you know, I think it's been a, I think it's been a blessing in disguise, man, for uh, Barcelona, and you know, not having Calathes be available for all the games, you know, through the injury and whatnot, you know, I think that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's given the the backup guards a chance to, to kind of, uh, you know, catch their yeah. rhythm and you know, build some confidence. So, um, you know, I'm definitely interested to uh, to see that matchup, and um, you know, also I think. I'm interested to see how uh, Milan uses uh, Melly this game because I mean yeah. I think he's he, he's a he's definitely a talent at that forward spot man he could do so much yeah. so 
he, he he does a lot. He does a lot. And the thing is, man, um, with Milan, I'm interested to see how they bounce back as well too, just because they started out, uh, I believe, 8-0, and they were top of the standings. Um, but like so many mm -hmm. teams around Europe and just NBA, basketball in general, injuries, COVID, mm -hmm. you know, different things mm -hmm. that, you know, you can't necessarily predict. So it'd be interesting to see how they bounce back. And um, this is a bounce back of sorts because Barcelona, um, they got upset within their – domestic league by Manresa, which is a huge one right. for them. So I, they're yeah. definitely looking to get back in their winning ways. And I agree with, you, with what you said, with Clayton's being out, it gives those other guards a chance to kind of come in and, you know, get those reps and, you know, build confidence for themselves as well. And like you said, they've been, they've been doing well. So it's going to be something interesting right. to follow. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, man. And, uh, you know, and real quick, uh, everybody back home, please leave your comments and, uh, uh, questions, anything you have uh, at Free Spora says greetings, greetings to you as well. And, uh, you know, as this game looks like it's a, uh, we're going to be getting started uh, shortly here. But you brought up an interesting comment, man, with uh, obviously with Barcelona losing in their domestic league and then, you know, having to come over to, to EuroLeague. Uh, you know, in your EuroLeague days, like, you know, mm -hmm. Were there, was there ever a time where, you know, you guys were struggling in the domestic league and then, you know, having to bounce back in your league? Like, you know, I imagine that, you know, it's it makes the coach a little tight heading into that Euro league game when you drop a domestic yeah. league game that you're not supposed to lose. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point you make, because the thing about it, um, I've been blessed to play with some good coaches, but most of the coaches I play for, they try to keep us always on. And what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. You could have a domestic game where you're supposed to win, but if you get caught slipping and you're not mentally locked in, you could drop a game. And now, like you said, a lot of times you go into a yearly game, now your focus is there, but what the good coaches are trying to get you to you know, lock in on is just always be locked in because mm -hmm. you can't take anybody for granted because at the end of the day, everybody's pros. <laughs> everybody's yeah, pros. For sure. so, that's one of the biggest things I've, I've noticed coaches do throughout the years. They try to just keep as much as they can guys locked in from game to game and never having that slippage mentally. mentally. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. You definitely don't want to – you definitely don't want to slip. And, uh, you know, and yeah. I think both of these teams, I mean, they got they got great coaches. They got veteran players. You know, I don't yeah. think any coach kind of hits the panic button after any loss. Right. Uh, you know, you know, but it's uh, – you know, it's a uh, it's about to be a it's about to be a battle today, man. One thing I noticed from sure, a Milan game. Final four go ahead. I'm yeah, just yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, man. It's a uh, and I had I had both of these teams going to the final four this year, so I'm yeah, uh, I'm excited to see this game. I think it's gonna be uh, I think it's gonna be tough. So look, I put everybody on the spot, so I got to do it with you. Who's winning this game? Okay. Tonight? On the record, on the record. Ooh, on the record. I'm, I'm going to go with Milan, man. I'm going to go with Milan. They're, they're hungry, they're feisty. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just go with Milan. I'm, I'm, okay. What about you? Yeah, so I, I'm thinking um, I got to go with Barcelona, man. I think, you know, just okay. coming off of that road loss at, uh, at Basconia, you know, being home yeah. right now, I think uh, – I think I think Barcelona's going to bounce back here. But, you know, one thing I was going to say, man, one thing to watch for that I was really impressed with, you know, Milan all season, and I give this I give this credit to Messina, is they space mm -hmm. the ball. They space the floor really well. Both teams do, though, actually. Both yeah. teams really space the floor well offensively, man. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, because of that, you know, obviously you got good space and it's going to – it's a lot more space for the, uh, for the defense to have to yeah, run yeah. and – gonna be a lot yeah. more open well coach for sure mm -hmm. for sure man so it's gonna be a it's gonna be a good game man as it looks like they about to shout uh, out shout out to my guy coach mario he's a long time assistant at milan he's been there probably like 14 years man he, he he's a brainchild when it comes to basketball man so i know he he prepares okay. well for every game great dude he's always the man next to the man he's, he's got the, the big okay. black frames next to the head coach man so he he's, he's a good dude man Great dude. And that's that's one thing I think people take for granted is like, you know, <clears throat> there's always, you know, there's always uh as a game just got started for everybody back home. Mm -hmm. But there's always a lot of talk about the head coaches, but you know, like you said, the yeah. guy the guy next to him is soaking up a lot of information, <laughs> man. And he's uh you know, a lot of times this they, is true. they're just as talented. 
you know what I'm saying? But they don't really get the uh, get the spotlight, you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, and Serge, definitely coach Serge back gets him on the board. Yeah. Serge, he's been doing that a long time. Chacho. Yeah, you are. Chacho, you already know if it uh if it gets late in the game, you already know who uh who gonna hey, be taking the big the shot. His hands. Yeah, man. So, what else did you like about Coach Mario? Uh, he was a player. Like, how did he help you he, while you were there? Yeah, he was a great liaison between uh the players and the and the and the and the, and the brass and the brain trust of the coaching staff. Um, he just understood. I, I believe, I don't want to misquote it, so I won't say it, but he, he spent some time in the States early in his coaching okay. career. And that gave him kind of okay. that baseline understanding of, especially when it comes to Americans and the game, mm -hmm. because the game of basketball, um, it translates all over the world, but the game is played differently in different parts of the world. So, yeah. but Coach Mario, man, he just always had a great knack for it. And big shout out to another coach, um, Mario Cancelletti. His nickname is Conch. He's coaching here in France in Limoges. So um, okay. he was also um, one of the coaches there when I was there, man. So big ups to them for sure. Nah, that's what's up, man. It's uh, you know, it's crazy seeing uh, you know, just seeing everybody, you know, just move around like year to year, every five yeah. years. You know, coaches just change and you know get man, all over the place. Musical but, uh, chair. Ooh, nice move. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a great move. Uh, real quick in the uh, in the comments. Uh, Jose Lito, where can we watch the match? You can go to EuroLeague.tv. We have a uh, promo code, WatchAlong10. You can get 10% off if you live outside of Italy and Spain. And Afri Spore says, who are the de two best players on the feature team in league-wide? Interesting. Um, mm. Two best players. Who, who would you say are the two best players? Uh, give, me, give me the two best players on the floor for you. Right now? Just, just well in this game. Well, yeah. Let's just go with right now because you know we don't know who's all okay. suited up. But a, who are uh, who are two of the best players on the floor for you? I'm a, I'm gonna go with El Chacho and Miritich. I'm yeah, go for Chacho sure. And, Miritich. and who do you like? That who are two players that you really like in uh, Euroleague in general? Uh, oh, Miritich, try. I like. Okay. Oh, wow. I, I I like I like Mike James, man. Say what you want, mm -hmm. the boy can ball. The man the man can ball. Yep. Come, the man can ball. Yeah, I like yeah, Mike yeah. James. Um, I like I like Brendan Davies. You know, I yeah. remember him when he was at Galgaris putting in work, and you know he's oh, had yeah. two, I believe two six two years three three successful years at Barcelona. I may be wrong, but mm -hmm. I like his game, man. Um, I remember him when he was coming out of college. Um, so he yeah yeah I like his game. Him and Mike James, I, I like their games. Who, yeah, I've been a, I'm a big fan of, uh, I'm a big fan of Miritich, man. I, I just think that, I mean, he just hurts you in so many different ways. Like he shoots it, Swiss Army knife. he scores on the block. Swiss Army knife. He, yeah. yeah, he passes it, he seals <laughs> early. And like one thing that people don't notice, he gets position for offensive rebounds early. Like as the shot's going up, he doesn't something. have, cause he's always sealing, he's moving. He's tough. Let me tell you something. As an elite Good rebounder, out playing against a guy like that is frustrating because most most people don't put efforts in rebound. That's what makes it fun for me. But a guy like that, mm -hmm. he's always – never forget, bro, um, the Final Four, my first year in Milan was in Milan, and he was on Madrid, and they were playing Maccabi Tel Aviv. And I, and I saw what you saw. He had four straight possessions. And it's kind of like you only know if you know. As a rebounder, I know what he was doing. His positioning, mm -hmm. long story short, was elite. Anticipation of the shot, tracking the flight of the ball, initiating contact, like textbook. Yep. Like Dennis Rodman couldn't have wrote it up any better himself. So uh, you, you're spot on when you say that. And that's yeah. something that's not going to come up on a yearly top 10 highlight or whatever. You know? nah. He does that, bro. He does that. And that's, a, and that's an extra four points a game. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, like he's going to get four points at least. Yeah, just on those offensive rebounds or get his team more possessions. So, you know, that's uh, that's definitely important. But uh, we uh, we have a couple of clips of, uh, of the coaches uh, talking pregame. So let's uh, let's go to that right now. Okay. 
turn it over. Yeah, because you do not, you never know before the game how you will shoot. You know, so um, the things you can control are defense and rebound. Everything else will. Say. We have more positive. We want to try to come out of the gates uh, with good mentality, with good uh, physicality. So hopefully we can do that. Yeah, it's definitely gonna be a physical game. You uh, you yeah. can bet that, man. As we got a we got an early eight to five lead here for uh, Barcelona playing against mm -hmm. Milan. Man, Barca's out here denying. Man, they uh they scrapping. Yeah, they they're getting after it. Kyle, huh? my man Kyle with the J. Um, yeah. The thing about these yearly games, man, a lot of people don't understand, man. It is 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 hand to hand combat. It's gonna be physical. It's mm -hmm. gonna be it's gonna be gritty. It's gonna be jokers holding. It's gonna be <laughs> elbows, forearms, mm -hmm. all that stuff. You know. Right. Yeah. Nah. It's a. Uh, it's definitely gonna be a. It's definitely gonna be a, a wrestling match, man. But yeah. you know, I want to go back to something you mentioned earlier, man. And I've been saying this since the beginning of the season. And, and granted, mm -hmm. they're in first place, so, you know, they, they're not asking me, but I think Brandon right. Davies needs more touches. I would love to see Brandon Davies touch the ball. He can work down there. He's so he's so versatile, man. He The and, biggest uh, thing I like about him on the blocks, his patience. His patience. Mm -hmm. And he's patient. All right, see right here. The guard's got to get that to him. Throw it over the top. Let him go yeah. get it. But his patience and his footwork and skill set, and obviously, man, you know, big man unite, big man coalition. We always want the ball. <laughs> um, but I agree with you, you know, bias aside, because in the games, like I watched um, the game they had here in France when they played Monaco. My man, what okay. the work? And they were running isos, cross pin downs, uh, cross screens, get him on the block. He was going to work, and he was active on the boards that game too. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, I agree with you, hundred percent on that. Yeah, no, nah, it's uh, yeah, I, I like his game a lot, man. And you know, kind of like you, I mean, I followed a lot of these guys, you know, over the last few years. But uh, yeah, you know, he's, I mean, it's it's granted, I I can say he needs more touches and stuff like that, but that's just kind of comes with the territory with being on such a great team. You know what I mean? Like for sure, you know, you got you got so many great players. Like you're not going to get the amount of touches that you got on you know a team that wasn't as successful. So this is true. I get it and at then, the end of the day. What I, what I learned from experience is that the law of averages always wins. So you may have a stretch, especially as a big man, where you don't get it like you want it four or five games or whatever, whatever. But this, like you said, the skill set is so high. Obviously, Nick Calathe is known to be out here. But you also may have a stretch mm -hmm. of 10 or 12 games where you get 14, 15 shots and offensive rebounds yeah. and, you know, getting into your sweet spot right where you want it. So you just – just have to trust the process and play that out because that's a that's a thing that young guys have to remember when they go from say, you know, being a, being the man on say maybe a top team within a domestic league, but then you go right for your first time in the Euro League and having to understand because that's a skill too, playing with other elite players. Yep. Because like you said, you're not going to yeah. get the 25 to 30 minutes. So how can you be efficient as a guard, as a big man, as a slasher within your 15 to 18 minutes a game. How can you impact? That's a skill. Yeah, nah, that's a, that's a great point, man. And uh, I think players on both teams definitely uh, have to learn that, especially, I mean, we got two final four teams from last year. And uh, I don't know if everybody back home saw it, but, uh, you know, that semifinal game was uh, was amazing. And uh, I think we got a clip from Corey, Corey Higgins, if y'all if remember that. Yeah. That's the thing you hate to see anybody do. Oh, oh. Yo. <laughs> yeah. I remember watching that. I remember watching that game live and I was like, when Corey hit that shot, I was like, yo. I was going yeah. crazy, man. It was a it was a big, big shot, man. That was a yeah, was. that was a great game, man. That was a great game. Heartbreaking, uh, heartbreaking loss for them, but um, huge shot by Corey sure. that game, man. Nah, it was he did uh, his thing that game. 
Yeah, no, nah, it's definitely a classic, man. Corey's my guy, man. He's had a he's had a great career, man. I played against him in college and obviously just followed his career all the way from there, man. And uh yeah. you know, super yeah. dope to see, you know, where he's at. He's yeah, always yeah. just been that efficient scorer. You know what I mean? Didn't need a whole lot of dribbles. He's just gonna be right. efficient, get to his spots, and he's he's gonna mm -hmm. hurt you. And see, he's one of those guys, we had a conversation on camera before this. He's one of those guys that has had a wonderful career and in my opinion, done it the right way because he saw his value. And I always tell guys, man, go where you're celebrating, not tolerated. You know what I mean? Is Corey yeah. Higgins an NBA talent? For sure. But he's carved out a career, man, that is, I salute, hats off, done a great thing. He comes from yeah. good stock. His dad was, I believe, an NBA executive for a number of yeah. years or something like that. But um, yeah, man, as, as a as a peer, man, I, I look at him and I'm, I'm I'm just elated for the things he's been able to accomplish, man. And, you know, big ups to him. Yeah, nah, for sure, man. And uh, yeah, we still got this 8-5 game, man. It's a, it's a no, slugfest, man. There's a lot of defense out yeah. there. Ain't gonna be no easy it's shots. Be, it, 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 yeah, it's gonna be hand-to-hand -hand combat be, for sure. Yeah, man, and like even on that last possession, man, uh, you know, you had Kyle Hines guarding uh, Miritich down in the uh, mm -hmm. down in that in that, in that mid post area. You know, what I'm saying it's uh, I mean, what you got one of the best offensive players going head to head with uh, one of the best offensive players. Uh, yeah. It's gonna be nice to see some of these matchups. But uh, real quick, uh, they're asking for the promo code. The promo code is Watch Along Ten. Watch Along spelled out, and then the number ten at the end. If you type that in, you'll get ten percent off uh, Euroleague TV. Um, if you live outside of Italy and Spain, oh. watch along ten. And uh, on to a Luong says Barcelona will win. Everybody back home, let us know who y'all think gonna win this game. It's still early, it's still early, so I won't judge you if you get your uh, predictions in late. <laughs> but uh, it's eight to seven, and uh, Barcelona's up right now. But um, but yeah, man, I think uh, I think one thing. One thing that I think that, you know, teams playing against Barcelona, you know, kind of have to do is to get Miritich involved on the defensive end. Because Miritich, yeah. he's going to move. He, he'll get out there. He'll hedge. He'll sprint back. Like, he's going to give an effort defensively, but you got to get into his legs because, you know, he's going to do his thing offensively, man. So you got to tire him out somehow, somehow, some way. I, I, As, uh, I agree. Chacho we're, hits we're another three ball. Some. Mm hmm Nah, for sure. For so it. as a big man. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, I was just gonna say look out for Kel, man. They just signed this guy to Bereza. He was averaging close to 16 a game, can really fill it up. Uh they signed him about okay. four days ago. Um, like I say, out of Bereza. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, Milan can, did, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he can really fill it up, man. So look be on the lookout for this this brother. Oh yeah, for sure. No, he can he can definitely hoop, man. But uh, you know, on the watch alone, we got a player head to head matchup uh, every week, and today we got Nikola Miritich and Nikolo Melli. Uh, mm. Those are gonna be our uh, those are gonna be our, uh, our our matchups of today. Miritich, uh, he won the MVP for October and December uh, this season. Um, obviously, he's averaging seventeen. Got a player index rating of. Uh, of 22, um, scored in double figures, 12 straight games. He's lead the league this season in three point shooting at 50. percent I mean, <laughs> I don't know what more you can ask for, man. From uh, from that side, and uh, you know, Nicolo Melli, man, he's uh, he, he's averaging eight points, five rebounds, and uh, you know, one and a half steals just about this season. And um, you know, and I think that Melli, even looking at his three point numbers and things of that nature, I think he's much better than his uh than his stats have shown oh, yeah. you know at the moment um yeah. but he he's one of those guys because we were talking about it on uh i forget which guest i had on here but we were talking about it and we were saying how like uh you know which forwards what forwards in the in your league can hurt you down low and from the perimeter mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and miritich obviously yeah. was a uh, was mm -hmm. an easy one, but Melly's another one, man. He's extremely skilled, and uh, he's a great man. player. He was was he he was down in uh in Italy with you, right? Yeah, man. And that's the thing. I can't 
I can't tell you how many games Melly won for us for that reason. It's because he's not quite a five and he's not quite a perimeter player. So matchup problems mm -hmm. were abound. <laughs> and mm. he's so athletic. He's so strong, like physically strong. Yeah. So he could hurt you in a myriad of ways from maybe posting up a smaller guy, driving by right. a bigger guy, uh, hitting big threes down the stretch. And, um, you know, when we played together, Milan, like he – he was just kind of that X factor, especially yeah. you know, depending on different teams we played and we got different matchups. And then even, you know, even the way he blossomed in um, Bamberg and Finner, I was so happy to see him, yeah. um, you know, blossom into to even more than what he was doing in Milan. So uh, Melly is definitely the, the total package, man. Total package for yeah, sure. Nah. Yeah, I really like his game, man. He's uh, he, he's definitely one of those guys, like you said, Swiss Army knife. He can, uh, he can yeah. do it at all. And, uh, you know, as we've been talking, man, <laughs> Chacho going off right now, man. He's got hey. two straight buckets after hitting those two threes. Man, he's uh, he holding it down right here, getting downhill, getting around yeah. downhill. They got the young boy on him right now, trying to trying to press up. And uh, you know, he's seen he's seen that he's seen that movie before. So uh, oh, yeah, he, he's not playing. Folks getting the rude awakening to. This would have been yeah, nah, yeah. <laughs> you playing it. You playing against one of the legends, man. man. You playing it. You playing against a Hall of Famer right, right my, there. My my first, mm -hmm. um, I believe, my first year league welcome moment, man. I call myself showing extra hard on the screen against Spanulas, man. He must have did a move, <laughs> dude, be between his legs, threw it off behind his back, um, dropped it off to Brian <laughs> Dunstan, and he monkey dumped it around. I said, man, I. No exaggeration. I didn't know what happened, man. I just <laughs> I don't know lost. <laughs> I'm like, man, what does what does Panola do? Like he, that was my <laughs> like year league moment. You know what I'm saying? That's like Mike funny, Tyson said, everybody got a plan until they get hit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's hilarious, man. That's a that's a great story. But that's the end of the first quarter. We're tied at 14 apiece. It's been a Not it up. It's been a defensive uh defensive juggernaut of a game. Both guys, uh, both teams are uh, coming out to play, and uh, it looks like we on this game's gonna ride out down to the wire. Everybody back home, please. Get involved in the EuroLeague Fantasy Challenge. It's free of charge and online. It's the first ever fantasy league for EuroLeague where you can manage and own teams, buy and trade players, play GM for a week. Um, it's a great time, and it's free. What's better than free? You can you can sign up for that at fantasychallenge.euroleague.net. Um, yo, so if you were starting a fantasy team, which, uh, which EuroLeague player would you draft first? Oh man, you're gonna have dudes mad at me. Um, <laughs> first, goodness, first, 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 man, I'm gonna go with my guy Mike James, man. Okay, I'm gonna go with Mike James. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. You know, Mike James, he's a he's a bucket getter, and I think I don't think Mike gets enough credit for how well he passes the ball, man. He doesn't, bro. Dude he had passes that rock. Assists his last two outings. I think he led the year yeah. assist in the month of December. Yeah, no, nah, he's he, he's legit passing the ball, man. And I think that, like, you know, a lot of times, and this happens, you know, with a lot of great players, but it's just sometimes when you have a talent like that, the rest of your See, game is all your shadow. Parking on instructions right there. <laughs> hey, you know, putting them on game. Yeah. I mean, Sergio got yeah. he got ten of their fourteen points. Right. Hey, Chacho getting after it, man. Yeah. I agree with you though, man. A lot of a lot of great players, even for them, they get typecast easily by the media, mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. opposing coaches, whatever. But you, know, you look at a guy like a Mike James or somebody of his of his of his you know caliber, where they are elite yeah. scores, they are elite one on one players, but they get their guys involved as well. And I remember playing with a guy, uh, Keith Langford. He was a similar guy. I mean, Keith yeah. could fill it up. I mean, he won Alonzo uh, Ford Trophy twice, I believe. But dude mm -hmm. had games where he has 11 assists, 12 assists, 8 assists. Yeah. And, and that was never talked about. But as players, right. we knew. As teammates, we knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's going to hit you. He's got great court vision. He'll use his attention that he draws from the defense as decoys to get guys open shots. 
Um, and I think that's a that's a that's a huge skill in itself, not just passing, but being able to draw that attention and you know get guys going. Oh yeah, for sure, man. And I think anytime you have somebody that's you know your best player, or your top scorer, like a Mike James or like a Keith Langford, and they also can pass mm-hmm. the ball, man, it's mm-hmm. it's such a threat, it's such a because they're gonna have a ball sure. in their hands. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it's sure. just uh, it's just that much of a threat. Oh, that's a tough bucket. <laughs> Yoku Bodies is nice, man. He gon' he gonna be a monster before it's all said yeah, and done. He's gonna be a problem. He's gonna be a problem for a yeah, long, yeah. long time. Yeah, young fellas, young fellas tough, man. And I mean, just even playing in Euroleague, it's like, okay, you know, Chacho goes out and now you're on Delaney. You know what I mean? You don't really get a <laughs> you no don't break. really get any time off, man. No breaks at all. Cause, no breaks cause I'll at tell all. You, Delaney. I've been playing against this dude since we were in college, ACC days. You know, he's at mm-hmm. Virginia Tech, I'm at Georgia Tech. And I've always been a fan of his game. Dude, Baltimore strong. That's all I say. Yeah. <laughs> Be more strong. Yeah. Fuck it, get him. Yeah, no, nah, for no, sure, man. Exactly. I was just, uh, yeah, I was just talking to him. And uh, I was just talking to him a few days ago, man. He's a. Uh, Mm-hmm. He's a good dude, man, but he's a he's sure. a bucket man. He's had a successful career. He's just uh, super tough, man. Super tough. Like mm-hmm. you said, Baltimore strong. So, you know, that's why I think that like, you know, Milan, when they got all their pieces in there, exactly. they're tough. They're super tough. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's and that's I the think a lot of teams. Season, man. Staying mm-hmm. strong and being able to go through all these ups and downs. And and if you could, you know, paint it, you want to be at your best. Basketball come spring, summer, come May, you know, April, yeah, yeah, June. Yeah. Hope everybody's healthy. So that's when you want to gel for that. sure. Be interesting. Yeah, that's definitely when you want to gel, man. So yeah, that definitely it definitely will be. And uh everybody watching back home on YouTube, please leave your questions. If you got any questions for me or Ghani, just leave them in the comments and uh we'll get to them as the uh as the game progresses, looks like they uh they trying to argue what a uh what a ball's at. Sixteen to fourteen, Barcelona's up against Alani Armani Exchange Milan. Real quick, I'm gonna take you guys through the other scores around Euroleague. Fenerbahce beat Olympiacos ninety four to eighty. Um, Bayern Munich is up at halftime thirty four to thirty three against Zalgiris, and uh, of course we have a sixteen fourteen game here. Um, Our slugfest. 16 14 game here uh, with the Barcelona and Milan. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, it's good to see, uh, kind of like you said, the uh, with uh, with Trey Kelly out there, uh, Trey Kell out there, uh, mm-hmm. you know, with Milan, you know, his new signing, mm-hmm. getting his fresh, getting his feet fresh in the EuroLeague. What was your, uh, do you remember your, uh, you remember your first EuroLeague game? I do, man. I, I remember like it was yesterday. Uh, I had just uh, came over from Philadelphia. I spent a part of the season with them, and I had just turned 25, man. And two days later, we played FS. They had um, – who did they have? They had the, the big Turkish dude. I'm trying to think. They had Jamal um, Gordon. Um, Jamal Gordon, yeah. former teammate of mine in Sassari, um, Ivanovic, Dusko. Uh, mm-hmm. They had a squad, man. Hey, they, they, they Turkish guys were, were, were like that. What's the um? He played for the Cavaliers. Simi Erdin. They had him. Yep. Um, and I just remember, man, just feeling like I just really wanted to prove myself. I was kind of nervous, not like fear, like, but nerves, like oh, I want to do well. And that kind of calmed down after the second quarter, and I just kind of got into my zone. And keep yeah. He had it going that game. I think he had like twenty in the first half. So they were doubling okay. him off screens, blitzing him, and he started dying me off, man. I'm getting one dribble dunks coming down the lane, you know, over dudes. I caught a lob. So then once I got that going, I felt comfortable. And I just remember thinking, okay, yeah, yeah I, I can do this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, nah. I, I can imagine, man, because, like, at the end of the day, it's like, especially, I mean, joining the team, you know, in a in the middle of the season is tough enough as it is, yeah. just trying to learn, mm-hmm. you know, the offensive system. But, I mean, just the level of defense and concentration that's required at the yearly level, man, is just yes. elite. So it's like, you yes. know, 
Yeah, we've all been playing offense for, you know, all our lives, and we know what we can do. But, you know, mm-hmm. defensively, man, you know, just getting and that's used to playing against a different level. set of guys. Right. And, and at, at this level, you're so right, man, because coaches lose their top about blown defensive assignments, like like you mm-hmm. couldn't imagine. I mean, I get it because yeah. the skill level is so high, so guys are going to make tough shots and great plays a given. Right. But giving guys those shots or giving up, you know, self-inflicted, you know, wounds, as they say. Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. And, that, and yeah. that's something that I learned quickly. <laughs> nah, that's a fact, man. That's a fact. Yeah, the coaches, yeah, they're going to they gonna blow their top, man. They uh, That back door, <laughs> that, that blown coverage. <laughs> right. They're going to lose it about that joint. That's one of the things you be trying to like look at your shoes. You ain't trying to look to that sideline. Right. <laughs> you gonna look everywhere but that sideline. Hey, do start <laughs> doing the palms up, like looking at the palms. Like, yeah, look at them palms. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no, that's a fact, man. Man, and we're here, sixteen, fourteen. Uh, looks like uh, oh, Melly got called for. He got called for an offensive foul on that. Wow. Got a couple offensive foul on that seal there. Yeah, that's surprising. They just about to yeah, I don't, know about I don't that. think they should have called that. I know that's what I'm saying. That's just a, that's just a physicality of the game, man. Yeah. But uh, it looks like uh, Chris stops Gal is out. We got a Zal Garris fan in the comments right now. Zal Garris starting to turn it around a little bit. You know, they've been playing they better are. than they started at least. You know, playing a lot For better. Sure. Trey Cal with a nice pull up. Okay. He's getting comfortable. He's saying he can score it. He's got a couple yeah, buckets in, it up. in this game already. Yeah, he's doing all right. Got a couple buckets here. It's good to see uh, Corey out there. See if they can get him going. Mm-hmm. But I mean, Corey can just he hurt you in something. Right? Yeah, yeah. He was out for a while. Yeah. He had an injury, but uh, he's back now. B. Davies got his oh, bucket. Nice See, what are we talking about footwork. Patience. Tell you, man. Yeah, you gotta give him. You gotta give him that ball down there, man. B. Davies can work. Yeah. I mean, Corey Higgins checking to the game. He's got three assists already. And that's what I'm saying. Is like Higgins don't have to score the ball to hurt you because you have to know where he's at. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You must. You have to know where he's at at all times. And uh, there we go. Melly's getting it going from outside. Now they starting to score. Okay, Mel. Melly just knocked down the tray ball. That's what I'm saying, man. I, I'm really surprised he's shooting 25% from three this season because he's a much better yeah, uh, average out though, much better shooter than that. Team, yeah, yeah, for sure. Nah, he's going oh, to okay. get that up. B. Davis got another foul. Draw that foul. That's what I'm saying, man. They got to they gotta give it to my man down there. He's a... Uh, He's a workhorse, man. So, what? Uh, which of the Euroleague cities was your favorite, or the gyms was your favorite to play in? Okay, uh, Euroleague city gym to play in. I'm I'm gonna say, ooh, I probably say Olympiacos just because their fans. <laughs> I don't even know what to call them. I would call them, they're devoted. As you know, they play the devotion okay. song oftentimes in the year league. Yeah. They're the epitome of devoted. And just going there on the road, I was blessed to be on one of the few teams that won there. Um yeah. when I was in Milan, I believe my first year. We we beat them by seven. And they had only okay. lost that's the only loss they had all season at home, at least in the year league okay. the season. And man, to hear the quietness of that crowd after how rowdy they started, man, but right, even right. other games I've gone there, just the excitement and just, you know, Wanting to try to get a win in that place, that was always mm-hmm. like a fun challenge to me. You know, probably one of the nicest arenas, probably the Jalgiris Arena. It, it's super nice. It's like yeah, yeah. I heard that. I heard it's cool over there. I heard it's cool over there. And you, uh, you got some, uh, you got some love from uh, most Psychus says hello. My name is Psychus, and I'm a Panathinaikos fan. He's like, okay. He said what's up? He said, Gani, I remember you played in uh, Panathinaikos. And uh, Ed Smurf said, said hello, up, hello, your league is back. Yeah. Nah, keep uh, keep great. dropping by and leaving your comments and stuff, man. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, man. We get on this uh when we get on this watch along, it don't matter who playing, Greek fans gonna they gonna stop by. 
They're going to let you know. And I was just talking about it. They're in Greece in general, not just Olympiacos, bro, but Greece in general, they are devoted. I mean, obviously, oh, Panathinaikos, sure. Olympiacos, but, you know, Ike, Pau, you know, the other teams, um, Prometheus, like, they are devoted in, in – <laughs> Two, two nah, real quick funny stories. So anybody listening in Athens knows this. There's a lot of TGI Fridays. I'm eating at a Fridays. I was running some errands on a different side of town. I guess it was where Olympiaco. This one I was in Panthinacos. Guy comes up to me. He's like, you made the wrong decision. You should have played for the Reds and just walks off. <laughs> Bro, I'm just trying to enjoy my chicken wings. Right. <laughs> like, I guess I was in Perez. Nah. So I think that's the part of uh, the town it was in. I'm like, bro, I'm just trying okay. to throw my chicken wings, bro. But that, that's it. Right. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> like, you should have played. Nah, nah, nah. It, uh, depending like, on yeah, where you I'm at, you don't need to. You don't deserve to eat. Right. You don't deserve to eat, depending on where you at. <laughs> I'm like, man, I thought I only had to worry about my cutlass when I'm out, out west. Yeah, man. Like, it's a, too, that's bro. a fact. That's On a fact, Tuesday. man. It's a, <laughs> yeah, nah, for real. It's uh, it's definitely, it's definitely a, uh, it's almost like basketball is a religion out there, man. And yeah, they, uh, they stick to it. They stick to it, and they they're loyal to they to their fans. Oh yeah, they definitely. They, they hold you uh, accountable too. They fire you up in those blogs and those websites. They're, for sure, look like George Panathis, two thousand nine, said uh, when Ghani played, uh, that was the real green power. Uh, I guess when uh, when you were with Pana. Yeah, we had a clip, man. Know. Those brothers, we, man, I was blessed to be able to say I played with Diamantitis, man. That is, we had DeMar Wilson, we had AJ Slaughter. Obviously, my, my good friend James Giss. Uh, mm -hmm. um, George Papianos was a young fella then. He's you know still in Pana, Pana now. Um, we, we had a clip, man. Then we took Cheska to five games and um, – the yearly playoffs when they um that was the last year that um AK forty seven that was his uh, final year they had uh okay. Tia Dosage and Jackson yep. and all those all those brothers mm -hmm. so they they, they no nah, that's they, definitely that's definitely a squad man and uh, yeah. just real quick just tapping in right now we got a 24-22 game Barcelona is up against Milan we got four minutes and forty three seconds left looks like uh Sarunas just got a tech. But uh, yeah, so it looks like we got some free throws guy. coming up from from Milan. Yeah, now nah, he's definitely he's definitely intense. But yo, he's tell me about uh, go ahead. He what? No, no go ahead. What you saying? No, I was gonna say, uh, tell me about playing with uh Dia Matitas, man, because I've said this a number of times on the watch along, man. He was my favorite European guard, and I when he retired, I was like, dang. Cause I love watching him play, man. Just a big guard, it was, pass it. To, just nice. To play dude. with Diamantitas was a treat, man. I, I just that's the best way to put it. It was a blessing as a big man. Ooh, just knowing that you had to have hands, feet, eyes, ears ready at all times, you know, because mm -hmm. any pass within ninety four feet was possible. And right. he just was a phenomenal human. This was a great guy. Um, mm -hmm. I got to Panathinaikos mid season. Um, obviously, I already knew some of the guys, so the American guys were very helpful. Um, but Diamantitis was real big and just helped me understand like the game and the nuances and the you know pockets and just understanding. And you yeah, know, yeah. really, I think he's in management now, but I'm I'm really surprised he's not a yeah. coach, man, because his his understanding of the game and the dynamics. Like you, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was it. Was a treat, man. It was a real treat. Yeah, nah, he was he was dope. But I think, you know, anytime, especially as a big, when you're on these teams, man, you got to get that relationship with your guard. <laughs> you know what yes. I mean? Got to get that chemistry down. Got to hey, get that chemistry yes. down, man. Yes, yes, yes. That is absolute truth. <laughs> yeah, man, he's a uh, – nah, I used to love uh, – I used to love watching him play. He's definitely one of my favorite uh, European players. Oh, yeah. So. You know, shout out to him for sure, man. And uh, here we are, 25-24. This was team. heading to the line here after that foul. He, he, he's my next door brother. He's, he's from Ghana, so I'm Nigerian. So he's my next okay. door brother. He, he's a recent signer for them too, man. Strong down there, man. He can shoot it. Right. Uh, 
You know, he was playing for a big club out in Turkey. They signed him recently. Uh, I like mm -hmm. ben, Ben's game too, man. Um, yeah. He's effective. He's been effective for them in both domestically and in the Euro League. So great signing by by Milan with with big fella. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you could. Uh, I don't think you could ever go wrong just getting with somebody that's gonna get down there, you know, and be multifaceted and, and bang, right. and be strong. You know, what I mean, because it is a for physical sure. game. Yeah, it's a physical game, yeah. so. You gotta have, you know, when you got guys that got size and they a little mean, you know what I mean? You right. got something, uh, you got something yeah. special, man. Like, I mean, you can think we, back we to like Gabby Sutley down in uh down in Madrid, you know what I mean? He's Ooh. a same kind of body He's type. <laughs> right. He's low, man. See, He's and that's low. the thing. I always tell guys, I say, it's one thing to look at it on TV. It's another thing to get in get in the water with, with the with the yeah. great white sharks, man. It's a, <laughs> with the piece. sharks, right? <laughs> no, nah, that's a fact. It's a different piece in the paint with them dinosaurs down there, man. That's a fact. Young boy just turned it over. That's James Naji. I believe he's 17 years old. Um making a uh making his debut, just turned it over just there on the yeah, on the base. Shake off the jitters. Yeah. No, he's he's going against Mr. Final Four, man. You know, Kyle yeah. Hines. Mr. Final Four. Kyle's a great brother too, man. I've been knowing Kyle for a long oh, time. Oh, great dude. And just just class personified, period. For sure. For class sure, man. He's a you know, he's he's done. I mean, obviously he's done a lot on the court, but you know, off the court as well, you know, with the Euro yes, League Players man. Association and you know, and everything yeah. else, man. Uh, his charities, you know, his organization, like said, his camps. Yeah, for sure. Man. Good brother. And he probably yeah, won't be mentioning this, man, but I won't get too much into it. But Kyle's a very wise businessman. Um, you talk mm -hmm. about his ventures, VC, like just very knowledgeable, man. Very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. um, and he is definitely the blueprint for guys coming overseas, man. He's somebody that all these young guys should reach out to and get their take. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, man. And it's like, you know, he's one of the players that, uh, you know, obviously he's, He's still a little ways from retiring, but when he hangs it up, man, and I, I look, I don't look forward to that day, but I look forward to that day so right. the world can just stop and appreciate everything that he's done. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, obviously, I don't want to stop flowers. playing, but like, yeah, yeah, yeah right. for sure. I, but I, I look forward to that day so, like, Ooh, the basketball world can stop and give him his flowers and, you know, just really look yeah. back at everything that he's accomplished, man. Cause, uh, because, because, it's so hard to make one Final Four. Ten? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And That's people crazy. can say what they want. People can say what they want about the clubs he's been on, but he's a huge part of why those clubs went to Final Fours. Let me just put that out there. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's he's second all-time in block shots. And, you know what I mean? It's, it's he's, crazy. The you know I mean? he's the yeah. glue. He's the glue. For sure. For sure, man. On multiple teams. Like, you know what I mean? He's, yes. he's one of... He's been a four-time yearly champ. Like he's what what nah, does that I, what does that say about a guy's pedigree? He goes to Milan year one, final four. Enough said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, and obviously his great years in Cheska and you know Olympiacos, but yeah, man, he's well accomplished as um they go to the free throw line. Yeah, nah, he yeah. was uh nah, he was super dope. Looks like uh and Miritich hasn't really been able to get it going yet, but just misses that one. 27 25. We got a two two minutes left in this first half. Milan spacing it out, man. It's a low scoring game, man, but I mean, we knew yeah, the defense was going to be there. Yeah, it's hand to hand combat for sure. Yeah, that's a fact. We got a. Uh, we got a. Uh, we got a question. Uh, what he said. So George Panathis says, "3D Diamantidis was a coaching player. He was the best European player ahead of all. He was the best defender, the best to pass, the best to shoot on crunch time. The man who calms and gives the pace." <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some, there's some, there's some truth in there. There's yeah. some truth in there for sure. He's a Dean Matidis. But uh, he also asked, what do you think about Stefan Jovic signing? Uh, do you think he will help Panathinaikos improve? 
Uh, yeah, I, I like them at Kemke. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's a good signing. I think he he plugs a lot of holes for them. Um, right. Panathinaikos has had some struggles this year, but uh, they got a good roster, man. You know, but that's the thing about yeah. you—you you can't count anybody out. Um, everybody's talented, right. and that's why you have to play all the games. Um, Not I, for sure. Yeah, so I'm a firm believer in that. But I think I think Yogi 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 helped him. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. I mean, anytime you got somebody with some experience and you can add them at this point in the season, man, it's always mm -hmm. a good look. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, and I think it just helps. It helps the team in general, yeah. especially you know they got they got a young guard over there, and you know Daryl Macon, and obviously he's been playing phenomenal. But you know, just adding yeah. experience to some youth, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It could uh, it could definitely help, man. But. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, got, I, we got this I, last I like game. Making game. Oh, yeah, he's tough. He's tough. Yeah. He's tough. There you go, your boy Ben. Quick yes, bucket, 32 25, 48 seconds left. Man, Milan, Milan's starting to, starting to get a little cushion here. Get a little mm -hmm. cushion here. 25, 32. Side note before here. I forget, I like. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, I, number 31 for Barcelona. I like the games I've seen. Oh, him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he Yeah, you He he he's fearless, mm -hmm. and that's a trait that you can't teach. Mm -mm. I like that about him. Not he's at gutsy. all, man. I think, I think one of the uh, one of the games we had here when he got extended minutes was uh, the game against Ephes, and. Uh, mm -hmm. And that was the exact word I used. I was like, yo, Yoku Bidis is fearless. It didn't matter if it was Michich, Shane Larkin. He right. was doing what he did. He was doing his job. He was getting to the bucket, shooting his floaters, passing the ball. Like, he was mm -hmm. doing his thing. And that's why I say that, like, that kid is going to be – he's going to have a very successful career because sure. nothing bothers him. Like, he's going to play one because way, and that's it. He's gonna to have that level of confidence that young – it reminds me of a Luka Doncic because I, again, I, I just remember playing against Luka Doncic and thinking to myself, like, mm -hmm. almost like, whoa, this kid is that young, that confident. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you just kind of tip your hat to it. Cause it's like, he's got the skill set to match too. Right. There's, but there's no intimidation at all. None. Uh, -uh. not at all, man. And, uh, yeah, we got a YouTube comment from Eddie Smurphy. He said, what team do you think will win the EuroLeague this year? Mm. Well, maybe we may be looking at one. Barcelona. Okay. Maybe That's what I said. I said, it's, I said it's Barcelona's revenge year. Yeah. I said it's they, the revenge year for yeah. Barcelona. Yes, for sure. I thought they would have won a Big fuck of our heritage. Oh, that is. Needed that. Huge. They needed that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they had a chance last year, too. Collectors kind of got hurt towards the, uh, yeah. you know, the final four there. That kind of hurt yeah, them. Hurt. But, uh, yeah, I think they're going to be uh, – I think they got they got a chance, man. I got Barca winning it this year for sure. Yeah. I got Barca winning it this yeah. year. That was – I was on record, you know what I'm saying? I like to stand by. Whatever I say on record, man, I'm standing by. And there I'm you riding. go. I'm riding to the tires yeah, flat, man. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? It's uh, I said what I said. <laughs> Barcelona. Right, right. Like, I said what I said. I love it. But no, nah, honestly, <laughs> though, you're right, though, because if those guys are – everybody's healthy. Uh, I mean, I just – top to bottom. Then, obviously, once Calathis gets back, um, mm -hmm. that it just, it's, I just – it's hard to see them losing. I put it like that. Yeah. It's hard to see them lose in a five-game yeah. series and in a two-game – uh, final four format. I just don't. Yeah, see and I it. think. But what I what I think is just, and that's the beauty of your league is once you get in that final four, anything can happen. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like true. whatever teams get up in there, anything can happen. And you think there, about, but, yeah, you think about hoops in general, man. Like even you know, think think, think about all of our careers. You get in the playoffs in general, and it's a whole yeah. new ball game. Because oh, it's kind of like everything gets thrown out the window because you're playing a team five times, seven times, whatever it may be. After the first game or two, everybody knew everybody's plays. Now it's about mm -hmm. who's going to be more physical, who's going to be more disciplined, yeah, who's got yeah, more yeah. stuff in their bag. You know what I mean? And then it's just like yeah. we're hooping at that point. 
And I think, too, with the playoffs, too, depending on your coach, if he likes to – some coaches, they're going to go into play, playoffs with half of a new playbook, you know what I'm saying, and trying yeah. to, like, throw things around. So it's like sometimes how well can your team adjust in the playoffs yeah. is going gonna, is gonna to dictate because, you know, sometimes coaches try to throw those wrenches in there and it doesn't resonate yeah. with the team, man, and it could throw yeah. off the balance a little bit, you know what I'm saying? So no, that's uh, true. Playoffs is a tricky thing, man. It's a tricky yeah. thing. I think, too, that's where uh, great coaches shine, too. Oh, for sure. That's for where sure. great coaches shine. Being able to adjust. They got 10 seconds here. Let's see what, uh, see what Chacho got going. Let's see what he got they cooking. Got the ISO. Got the young boy on the ISO. Bucket. Got him on the Tough. Island. He's been doing that a Jeez. long time, man. Oh yeah, hey. What we said, if there's a if there's a big bucket to be shot at any point, hey, you know he gonna take it. You know he gonna take it, and he gonna make it. He's been doing that for a minute, but yeah, man, man, that was True. a that was a tough, tough bucket there, and uh, that is halftime, ladies and gentlemen. We have a score of thirty four. <clears throat> excuse me, we have a score of thirty four to twenty eight. Six point lead for Armani Exchange Milan. Uh, who was your MVP of that first half, man? I mean, it got to be Serge, man. I mean, he. Yeah, got to go with Mr. Chacho. Man, he uh, he went off reading out Sergio's stats right now, man. He's got 15 points, shooting six from 10 from the field. I mean, he's, he's cooking right now, to say the least, man. But, uh, you know, 15 points yeah, in 12 is. minutes, it's. Uh, that's tough, but That's everybody back home. About. Exactly. Yeah. Got to be efficient, especially at this level, man. But, uh, yeah. you know, that's uh, that's halftime for us right now. But uh, let's check out what's going on around EuroLeague. kid you know to start playing uh, high level basketball and uh, to play in EuroLeague so everything started in EuroLeague with Milan. At the end of this contract if you know everything goes out uh, we all hope it will be eight years with this club so I will spend probably more than half of my career with this club so it means a lot. Over a decade on from his arrival in Milan as a 19 year old Nicolo Melli is back where it all began. I was a kid when I first got here and then I, I left to, you know, find my own path and uh, to develop my game. And now I'm, I'm back here with a totally different role with, uh, you know, uh, three nice experiences uh, uh, abroad. And, uh, but the club, uh, you know, is a big part of my career. We joked that, you know, I, my first season in Italy, he was 16 years old and we played against each other. So now we're both, you know, kind of coming full circle, you know, towards, you know, our 30 for our thirties, you know, of our career. And I'm really excited to have him as a teammate. Now is a high level organization in EuroLeague. Uh, you can see in the day by day um, life, how everything is very well organized. We're talking about one of the best team in Europe. Joining a Milan side that reached the final four for the first time in three decades last season, the 30-year-old's experience could be pivotal 
as Atori Messina aims to guide the three-time champions to their first title in 34 years. We named him and Chacho uh, the co-captain of this team. Um, Olympia had the two co-captains only, I think, uh, one time about 10 years ago, uh, when Joe Blair and Dante Calabria were the two co-captains. The reason for the choice is this. Nicolò played here many years, so he's the player who has played more, most games with us of all the roster. But he also signed a three years contract and he's, you know, projected to be uh, one of our leaders for the future of this team. He's been very successful over the last years, playing in Europe, Euroleague, and then NBA, and this summer with the national team. So for us, it's a great addition, uh, having him here, uh, having him feeling this is his home, and, and create uh, uh, the, the, the same atmosphere that, that we are building. We need first to achieve the, the, the playoffs, and then from there, go to the Final Four, and then we will see. You know, Final Four is a very, special format, you know, a very small problem in the, in the wrong moment can, you know, uh, ruin the entire season. So you need also to be a little bit lucky at the very end and, uh, you know, hopefully everything goes how we hope and we have to work a lot to, you know, to be there and to try to compete for the biggest trophy in EuroLeague. Man, it's a nice little feature on uh, Nicolo Melli, man. He's, uh, you know, I, I like these, I like these features that you know that we have at halftime. Sometimes, man, just bring a spotlight to, uh, you know, some of the great players in Euroleague. And uh, you know, as we yeah, as we talked about before, man, Melli's, uh, Melli's definitely, he's definitely one of them, man. Yeah, it's crazy. Like he said, at the end of his contract, he would have been there eight years. Man, that's a that's a long time. It's definitely a long time. And uh, obviously, Melly watched this uh, this feature because on Twitter he had something to say. Uh, he said, "I I definitely had some hair issues. Nice to see how many steps <laughs> I've already made in yearly with Milan. Hopefully, uh, better moments are in the making." <laughs> that's funny, man. Yeah, it's funny, man. Just uh, you know, everybody's doing the uh, the ten year challenges now, man. And uh, you know, oh, yeah. once you start getting into the thirties, man, you start looking back at the hairs and hey. stuff like that. Man. And, uh, it'd be a little different. Hey, that's true. Man. Father Tom is undefeated. <laughs> undefeated, undefeated, man. It's um, yeah, now nah, for sure. But you know, it's dope to see like you know players going later into their careers and playing well and. Uh, you know, and, you know, just having, you know, great careers towards towards this, the, the second half of the career, you know, having better years towards I their agree. second half of the career. And, uh, you know, kind of like, agree, like Melly. I mean, obviously he's not so old, but, you know, he looks like he's yeah. in his prime right now. You know what I mean? And, For sure. Uh, you know, that's I think dope. it's all about mindset because I, I tell people all the time, it's all about obviously taking care of your body, but it's mindset, man, because it's funny, man. I <laughs> I was playing, man, and a guy, a young guy, he said, man, what you about like, how old are you, man? He was like, no way you're 30, 33. I said, man, I thought you was 25. <laughs> like, he was asking, like, how old are you? But he knew my age, but I, I don't play. Right, 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 right. It's all mindset. It's all mindset. Yeah. You know, nah, you know, for you sure. What you always do, you get, the results you always get, you know. Although some days you do feel it. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Some days you do feel it. But nah, that's a fact. In a good place mentally, you know. What's uh what's one thing you've seen in uh in Melly's game that you think he's he's improved from when you played with him before? Just complete package. Um we played together in Milan, mm -hmm. he was great, but mm -hmm. the role he was in was limited. So he was okay. more D and three. But those Bamberg and Fenerbahce years, he really blossomed. And even his you know, a few years in the NBA, he really blossomed to a guy who can defend mm -hmm. two, three, four, a guy who can be a playmaker, a guy who will mix it up in the post, um, you know, push the break. I just saw a lot more of that um, over his four year stretch in, um, you know, Bamberg and, and Fenerbahce. So I would say that's the, that's the biggest thing, man. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, for sure, man. I think he's, uh, yeah, he's definitely grown, man. And I think that's kind of, that's kind of what the beauty of 
finding different teams can do for you. You know, one team you may have a specific role and then sometimes you can go to another another situation and really grow your game. And then, you know, yeah. he's found his way back to Milan and, you know, now he's, mm-hmm. he's able to accept a bigger role at a at a later stage in his career. So yeah. you know, like I said, man, it's a uh, it's super dope to uh to see the journey. But um going to these uh these YouTube comments, um Let's see. Uh, Eduardo Marino said, which is your favorite team for this match? Eduardo, I said Barcelona early in the uh, early in the show and uh, Gani's rolling with uh, with Milan. So uh, those are our picks. So let us know who y'all rolling with. And, uh, you know, let's see what's mm-hmm. let's see what's going to see what's going to happen. I think uh, we got a six point deficit here. 28 to 34. Mm-hmm. Let's take a look at the uh, at the other scores in EuroLeague. So Fenerbahce beat Olympiacos um, for Fener. Uh, Fener won uh, 94 to was it 94 to 80 against Olympiacos, but Fener was at home. Olympiacos ain't lost at the house yet, and uh, I got Olympiacos sneaking into the Final Four, man, because of that. They uh, they're peace, pretty strong. Peace and the friendship. Crib. There's yeah. no peace, no friendship. You go play there. I don't know why they yeah, call it man. that. <laughs> no, they definitely. They it's tough. It's tough to play there, man. And they've been they've been holding it down. And uh, Bayern Munich is up 60, 61 to fifty four um, against Zalgiris. Um, that game is in the third quarter. They just finished the third quarter, so uh, yeah, they got a they got somewhat of a tight one there. Um, let's see who, uh, who comes out on top of that game. But uh, and then we're sitting here with our six point game, waiting for uh, waiting for halftime to end. But yeah, man, I think uh, I think one of the scariest stories in Euroleague right now is F is sitting in the eighth spot right now. You know, Ephes was a team that started off the season pretty bad, and now they're yeah. starting to wake up and started to steady climb. And that's not a team anybody wants to see in the playoffs. Nope. And the thing about it is, they tasted it, so they know what mm-hmm. it tastes like. Right. And that's a dangerous, dangerous thing to be dealing with because they know. No, nah, for sure. For sure, and they know, and they can turn up on you real quick. You know, don't let them get yes. to that final four. <laughs> right. Don't let them get into that final four because I mean, ain't no lead safe, and they can stretch any lead out to something yes. crazy in a heartbeat, man. And you know, and I think even their struggles in the beginning of the season was, yeah, well coached, of course. And I think even their struggles in the beginning of the season, I mean. You know, they were they were without Brian Dunstan, you know, for a while. And, you know, he kind of holds things down on the defensive end. And, uh, yeah. you know, anytime you lose, you know, kind of your defensive anchor, it's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's always tough to, uh, you know, to return yeah, back to the force. So. Yeah, he's been a force down oh, yeah. for a long time. Had the pleasure of playing against Big Fella many, many times. And, yeah, he's, he's, he's an anchor. He's a force. And he's been, a, he's been somewhat of a glue guy for them, kind of similar to Kyle Hines. Defensively, mm-hmm. uh, for FS, better half of what six, seven years now for FS. So, yeah, um, this is this is this is very true. Yeah. So yeah, I think that uh, you know, with them sitting in that AC, man, that's a uh, that's, that's scary. That's scary for a lot yeah. of teams that will be getting into the uh, getting into the year league, man. But I think <clears throat> the surprise for me this year is definitely you know they've been playing yeah. extremely well. Shout out hey, to my brother Lorenzo Brown. He's been playing uh, lights out. He's been playing extremely, <laughs> extremely well. I mean, he he was I was expecting him to play well, you know what I mean? But I like the team that they put together over there, man. They, they got up. Uh, they they do. Up. They 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 gel well. They play with energy. You know, they defend. Yeah. You know, John Brown down there, like they're he's an animal. He's a man. Old man. if you think about it if you think about it like a lot of the top teams they got that one guy on defense that just kind of messes messes things yeah just messes things up just the offense all balance you know what i'm saying and i think that uh 
you know, he's that guy for them, man. Uh, he's been, oh, yeah. he's, I mean, I think he had five steals. Uh, yeah. One of the, uh, one of the other games, either the game, the last game or the game before, man. But, um, you know, you got them and then even Zenit, you know, St. Petersburg. Yeah. I mean, they've been playing this whole season without, uh, without Shabazz Napier and they've been playing well and holding it down. So, once they're able to add him back, you know, as another piece at the point guard position, they're going to be tough. And, you know, yeah. they're, uh, they're doing well. So it's a lot right, of, uh, it's going to be, it's going, it's going to be an interesting season to see how it unfolds. Yeah. It's a whole law gym from like eight to like 13, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's going to be a race oh, yeah. to the finish for sure. Oh yeah, for sure. Nah, you got, you got teams, man, that it's going they're gonna be playing musical chairs and you know, juggling. Oh, yeah. But uh the Americans, yeah. Yeah, man. It's uh but we got a we got a clip for the uh halftime coach interviews with uh Sarunis, so let's take a look at that. Coach, tell us about the things to, to improve in this second. Well eleven turnovers is number one thing, you know. We don't shoot the ball eleven times. This is uh this is crucial. I think uh we need to find a little bit of offensive rhythm. And in defense, we okay. We just gave up uh, some silly baskets, you know, two back doors for four points, other, other miscommunication between the guarding fives and fours. So eight points from this. In general, we okay. Offensively, we need to find some rhythm. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, it's been a tight match so far, but what kind of things can make the difference in this second half? Well, I think Sara said that turnovers. Both teams are turning the ball over too much. 11 turnovers per team. Whoever will take care more of the ball and uh, will be a little bit more you know, uh, sharp on offense, we probably have a chance to win. Thank you. Cool. Yeah, that's a, it's definitely a fact, man. The uh, turning that ball over is a, it's always a problem, man. And you definitely don't want to do that at the house, for sure. Yeah. Definitely not trying to turn protect, that over. Protect. Yeah, that's yeah, 11 turnovers yeah. a lot at the half, man. It's yeah. a lot at the half, but the third quarter is underway. Let's see. Uh, Let's see how both teams clean it up here. As, uh, looks like they're going, they're going into B. Davies a little early now. That's what I'm talking about. They heard our cry. Oh, I caught it for that offensive? See, see, as a big man, I hate that call because you can't penalize yeah. me for protecting myself. He had his hand on him. Yeah, he had his yeah. hand. He had the forearm on him, like. Right. I, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't know about that, one, man. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that's tough. That that's weak. That's tough. Because it's not. Call. It's not like. It's not like the arm is just sitting there. It's pushing against right. you. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's not like it's you just there. <laughs> Rib cage. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's not like it's just there, man. Tough finish by Devin Hall. But. uh yeah, man, that's a that's a tough call, man. He's been, he's been playing well for the this, this year too. He's one of those nah, guys who sure. made a great transition from the NBA to the Euroleague game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, nah, he's a uh, yeah, he's been playing well, but uh, yeah, man, I think that uh, yeah, I think in, in Euroleague, man, it's it's a physical game. You got to kind of let some of those ticky tack calls mm -hmm. kind of go man especially an offensive foul like that like nobody gained an advantage like just right. let these guys play through that you know what i mean but uh you know it is what it is looks like uh that's a good pass good pass again good finish so we got 30 36. huh we got a uh, uh, looks like they got to um, stop. But we got a replay clip of uh, Sergio's last shot just before the half. Let's take a, let's take a look want to get it to Rodriguez yeah. and quickly do so. Seven seconds now as he goes up against Nachi. Steps Ooh. back. Shot is up and it's good from Sergio Rodriguez. What a way to end the first oh. half and what a first half it has been. Yeah, that was definitely uh that was definitely a tough shot, man. Sergio's been doing that forever though. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, and I, you know, now and, and I'm pretty sure, you know, what maybe like fifteen years down the road when we got James Najee on the uh 
on the uh, on the watch along. He's gonna say that was his welcome to your early moment right there. Hey, probably <laughs> yeah, so. young fella gonna be like, probably man, it's the end so. of the half. Sergio was up top. <laughs> Put him in the mix. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's uh, ain't much you could do out there, man. As a big though, what what kind of uh? What kind of goes through your mind when like when that guard is like spacing you out and you got caught on that switch <laughs> or whatever it is what it, what is your thought process a lot of times like do you take it as like disrespect hey. like oh no i'm about to sit down with you or you what is your right. thought process on a personal you know, level? honestly man it's one of those things where it's like you know what i'm gonna just give him all i'm a i'm gonna mm-hmm. try to stay with this guy at least for me you know what i mean because i'm right. i consider myself pretty athletic for a five man i move pretty well so right like i like challenges so can i stay in front of guards no because that's not my job but when i get switched off right. on the island i'm like in my mind in my head <laughs> I'm, right. like, sure, I'm, about, I'm about to strap up you know what i'm saying he may put me in the yeah mix, yeah in my head i'm gonna strap him up you know <laughs> and don't let me get a stop <laughs> oh man i'm hype <laughs> that's funny man when i used to uh when i used to play in a big get switched down on me man i used to tell him i'd be like all right it's for him like a parking brake <laughs> like right. you ain't going through me you better shoot right. it over me you ain't going through me right, i'm right. gearing up for that fight man and uh you know in my head yeah. i'm like i'm about to win this i'm like you gonna shoot it over <laughs> me but he ain't gonna he ain't just gonna punish me under the basket like i held my own for sure <laughs> it's the same yeah, thing yeah. I, I feel like I feel like in basketball, man, you always have to uh, you always have to battle like your ego versus the strategy. You know what I'm saying? And yes. sometimes it's better to just all right. Let me just force them to the help and uh, right. you know, just do what we're supposed to do. But uh, you know, That's basketball true. players, we all think part of being a good basketball player is thinking you're better than you are. You know, what I mean, you have to. Yeah, you have and, to. Uh, you have to. You have to have what I like to call a baseline level of arrogance to be successful at this game. Mm-hmm. But like you say, it's all about balance because you have to constantly balance between what does the coach want, what is the strategy, what does my individual skill or my instincts say. You know what I mean? Because it's yeah, I've had plenty of times where you know, like you said, you know, I'm going with the strategy, but I've had some times too where I'm like, uh, we're not about to double this guy. I'm gonna play him straight up, (laughs) especially Mono Imano. Come on now, unless it's Shaquille O'Neal and he retired in 2011. I played against Shaq. Now. We right. don't need some help for that. But oh, wow, I played against a uh, big Sofo too. I played against him too. That's a Sofo. different story. Yeah. But yeah. anybody not named Shaq and Sofo, I feel like I can, you know, strap up one on one. You can hold your own. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, right. So, no, nah, I'm, I'm already knowing. And, uh, <laughs> and meanwhile, man, Barcelona came roaring back, man. They up 37-36. Got a couple buckets from Miritich and Kyle Curich yeah, on, they're the, on the fast break there. They scrapping mm-hmm. now, man. We got a brand new ball game, man. Everybody back home, go ahead and uh, leave your predictions, man. I'm giving you all a discount on getting your predictions in. You know what I mean? It's a one-point game, so it's a fair game. You know, let us know who y'all, who y'all think is going to win this game or even uh, if you want to go long and uh, talk about the uh, – the yearly final four predictions we're all down with that too and uh you know leave your questions and everything else but um and i'll take this time too if you want to watch this game and many more go to euroleague.tv to sign up for euroleague tv we got a promotional code you watch along 10 that's watch along and the number 10 you get 10 percent off of you know euroleague tv for this season that excludes those of you that live in uh italy and spain but uh, I highly encourage everybody to go there and pick it up, man. It's super dope. You can watch multiple games at once. A lot of great features on there. So, uh, you know, go check that out. But, you know, here we are as uh, Kyle Hines just ties the game up at 37. We got 639 left with Hines at the line for one more. But, uh, man, B. Davis just went down with another foul. How many fouls he got there? Uh B. Davies is sitting uh, let at, let me see here. B. Davies has three fouls, okay. He got three fouls. He's playing well, though, man. He's got a, he's got seven he points in this game. Man, Meritage starting to wake up, though. Meritage got a, he got 13 right now. Started off a little yeah. slow, but you don't want to get that man going. 
we'll see nah, let him, once he let gets going, it could be a, <laughs> man. Another another little sleeper is Sonley, though. You right. know, I mean, I think they've been guarding it well and staying staying attached, but oh my god, that's a nice bucket. <laughs> Yo, man. That's Miritich true. is nice, dude. That's Miritich true. is nice, dude. Lefty hook, man. It's like you think you got him bottled up, man, and then yeah. he just finds a way to he shifted you know, down get there. that bucket in. He is. He's shifty. He is. And it's crazy because he doesn't look strong, but like you're not about to get Deceptive. him off balance. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. His pace is yeah. And he plays yeah. physical. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's, he's a game player for sure, man. Yeah, nah, no doubt. That's a fact. That's definitely a fact. Trey Ball. Yeah. Oof. Pro Vitola. Now these guys is playing now. Yeah, they starting to they starting to ride that momentum over there. Mm-hmm. That home crowd. Mm-hmm. I think Milan's got to get more penetration. They they playing too they playing too far out. They are playing the offense. They're starting the offense too far out. Yeah, they, yeah. They were getting downhill. Yeah. Nah, I mean, yeah. yeah, and like, but that was one thing that you know we had spoke about early. Like from the beginning of the game, Barca was like denying. You know, they were denying Milan and trying to force them to catch the ball out. And uh, like you said, man, it has them playing far from the basket. And, uh, yeah, you know, offense gets kind of stagnant that way. You know what I mean? Yeah. They start taking away options. But you're right. They definitely do need, to, uh, they do need to get downhill. They yeah. definitely do need to get downhill. Okay. I, think, I think Milan could benefit if they had, like, more of, like, a lob threat. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I think if they had a if they yeah. had a lob threat on those pick and rolls, yeah, they just they just got to call gun the wall up, man, and you know I saw all that, man. You know what I'm saying, man? <laughs> just, you know he he gonna yeah. log out of the watch alone, slide down, hey. <laughs> slide down to Milan. Hey, how, for the how you used to quarter. say it back in high school? Get that old thing back. <laughs> <laughs> man, the number yeah, ain't changed, <laughs> <messing>, man. <laughs> No, nah, for trouble. real, but like that's <laughs> nah, but that's that's kind of like the uh the profile they need. They need that athletic big, I think, you know. Yeah, for sure. They, in a game like help. this, you know what I'm saying? It yeah, I mean you got guys that can shoot the ball. Too. For sure. Yeah. You got, you know, space to You got Delaney, you got through. Hall out there. Yeah, you got yeah. Melly. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's the sure. uh that's the benefit of having I agree. Uh, I agree having those those bigs like that, like you know, and I think you look at teams like, uh, like even like, uh, you know, Panathinaikos, but also like Real Madrid. You know, when they got Tavares yeah. in there, I mean, <clears throat> when he's rolling on that, when he's rolling off of that pick and roll, the defense has to collapse, or else he's just yes. about to catch it and just, you know, just drop yeah, it in it's, the rim. It, it, it's but, pick uh, your poison with, with Big Fella. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for sure. So it's just. Uh, it's uh it definitely benefits a team when you have that live threat that can uh, oh, get yeah. that defense to collapse. But man, they done turn this game around quick, man. We like halfway through the yeah. third quarter, they went from down six to up six. Right. Oh nice man, game. Milan only scored uh, on that free throw. You're right. Or, uh, yeah, they are no, they had a they had a they had the free throws and then one other bucket, but yeah, they gotta they gotta find some offense here. Cause uh but you know <laughs> you know Sarunas was going off in that in that halftime. In that halftime, he fired them guys up. He you fired them know. guys up. You already know. Yeah, he fired he just, them guys up. He just up. strikes me as a guy who's just no nonsense. I mean, I yeah. don't know the guy, but he, he just strikes me. Right, right. I mean, both of these I mean, coaches. It, yeah, I think I think Messina seems a little cooler or calmer about it, though. You know, For Sarunas, sure. you For know, sure. he, he he's animated he's on that sideline. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sarunas, Sarunas think, a little more animated on the sideline. I think Sarunas be, um, like, wanting to go out there and hoop sometime, like, real, just real quick. <laughs> like, you can tell, like, he's doing <laughs> If you want to like, yeah, he, he does seem like the tight, like, yo, you want me to do it? You want me to do it? All right. 
You know, yeah, me, that's how the former players be, though. He's out, out there. <laughs> <laughs> that's how the former players be, though, man. It's uh, yeah, it'd be intense, it's man. tough, man. Kyle Courage, man, put these guys up nine, though, man, with that. Yeah. That last trade ball, man. It's uh Yeah, that's tough. They are they are clicking right now. Courage got ten points right now. You got ten and five. But uh Yeah, yeah man. Solid. I mean I think it's I think it's a uh I think it's worth mentioning too. You know, Milan is missing, you know, Siobhan Shields and Luigi Dutome, right. which are yeah. uh, you know key up, pieces for them. Big up but, to my man Luigi Dutome, man. Good brother, man. I played with him in Rome too. Another another phenomenal player, man. Just yeah. Does everything, and obviously they mm-hmm. do everything. Savon Shields, man, a guy had a phenomenal yeah. year last year. Been playing great this year. Um, yeah, you know, peace and blessing yeah. him with the, in- the hand injury, man. Hopefully he gets well soon. Yeah. That. So. Yeah, nah, for sure, man. They both, you know, really good players. Um, yo, so you think uh, yeah, you ever shot. thought about coaching in the future or anything? You know what? I'm, I'm, I'm no. I have it, but people say I, I make mm-hmm. I make a good one, so that could change. Mm-hmm. Um, as of today, no. Um, I just figured, man, when I'm done playing, I'm done. Um, but we'll yeah. see. We'll see what God has for me, man. I may end, yeah, yeah, yeah. accidentally end up doing it. <laughs> yeah, nah, you, you never know, man. It's uh sometimes like when you you know when you're a basketball junkie, man, it's it's tough to to put it away completely. You know what I'm yeah. saying and. Uh, you know, and then also just being competitive, you know, sometimes I think yeah. when you step away from the game, you miss that urge to compete, you know, Man. and that's uh, a lot of guys talk about that. That's another the outlet. Yeah. Yeah. To get out there and just kind of compete and get those juices yeah. flowing. So, you know, you never know. Sometimes, you know, it could we'll be that, but yeah, yeah. we we'll definitely see. Uh, Delaney put up another little heat check. Man, I think uh, you know once Delaney uh, once Delaney gets going, man, he's gonna, yeah. you know, he's battled some injuries this year, but once he gets yeah. his rhythm going, he's gonna. He can fill it up quick, man. I've seen it. Nah, for sure. <laughs> Many a times he yeah. can fill it up quick. Nah, that's a, that's a fact. That's a fact, man. Three point shooting so huge, and uh, as a matter of fact, let's go back to this replay of that Kyle Courage the three pointer. Shanley for Kuric, who turns around and strikes to three. Kyle Kuric is on fire. Man, he don't, he don't need but an inch of daylight. The thing's Man, going up. If that. Yeah. Another one. There goes another bucket. Another bucket right on cue. <clears throat> you know, one thing I love I about think- him is he, he's super efficient. But he defends too. He gets a lot of effort on that defense. He's end. feisty. He gets after. Kyle, Kyle, yeah, if Kyle's feisty. Yeah. He's gonna fight with the bigs, guards. It don't even yeah. matter. You know, he. I think in a game like this of, too, it's tough. It's tough when you get down because it is such a slug and physical game, and it's hard to mm-hmm. manufacture points. So that's why a lead yeah. is that much bigger in a game like this. Yeah. No, nah, for sure. Because we're we're having a low sure, score affair. So Yeah. And you're not gonna get a lot of open shots. Like even Kyle Courage's jumper, like dude was right there. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna get yeah. open shots. So it's uh you know, like you said, like having that lead, it's uh it's a lot longer than it than it appears because yeah. you know, you gotta kinda claw your way back and get stops, especially when you're playing against a good team that's not turning the ball over. Now you really right. got to be efficient with those possessions that you have. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. But yeah, man. And uh, but I always like to look at you know the offensive rebound numbers. Um, and Barcelona has yeah. eight compared to uh, you mm-hmm. know Milan's four. But I think uh, yeah. offensive rebounds are are huge, man. As a big man, I just have a keen understanding of that. You want to you kind of equate it to American football. Offensive lineman, defensive lineman, you call it the trenches. Mm-hmm. The offensive rebound, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's, a, that's a trench indicator. You know what I'm saying? Where it's like mm-hmm. that extra offensive rebound, extra possession, you know, momentum shift. That stuff is huge over the course of a game. Talk yeah. about we were between 8 to 12 offensive rebounds. If a, if a team can get that, that's that's game changer. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, nah, that's a fact, man. And I think that, like, you know, just having those rebounds, man, it's – and typically when you get an offensive rebound, the ball's under the basket most of the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So the defense automatically just gravitates under the basket. So, you know, it's a lot of times mm-hmm. get kick out threes or, you know, you never know. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's another shot attempt. But it uh, – it really hurts. And I mean, for the defense, it's like, you know, you hate to sit down and defend and then give up an offensive rebound. Yeah, and, it's, uh, it's deflating. It's, it's deflating for sure. It's super deflating, man. But, you know, is this uh, like Jerry and Grant trying to get busy out there, man? You got him a couple layups, mm. drive it to the cup. Oh, Malcolm with the okay. with the, with All right, the Malcolm. lion roar. Okay, Malcolm. All right, Malcolm. Know, bark on him then. <laughs> Come on, bark on him, Mal. <laughs> bark on him. That's a huge bucket, man. Man, let MD get comfortable out there, man. It's gonna it's gonna be scary out here. Young man. fella. Yeah. He's right back at it. Yoku by this is tough, yo. <laughs> Yoku yeah, Bidis is tough. Yoku Bidis is tough. He come right back at it. He's a uh... – that was a good take. Ooh, mixed. Yeah, that was a good take, but – Yeah, that was nice. Yoku Bidis, man. Nice. He's a uh... – he's hooping, man. A young fella, like yeah. – yeah. The young fella, you that's, the, uh, that's the end of the third quarter, but – the young fella, man, he's uh he's hooping, man. We got a seven point game over here. Uh, Barcelona's up 54 47. Kind of just turned the ties right now. Um, Yoku Bidis has he's got eight points right now. He's shooting four for six from the floor, man. I really mm-hmm. like this young fella. But everybody back home, please don't forget to sign up for the fantasy league that we have with Euroleague, Euroleague Fantasy Challenge. Please head over to fantasychallenge.euroleague.net. It's free. You get to play general manager and uh, trade players, you know, buy players, do what you have to do. Um, Have your friends play. It's a lot of fun. So don't forget to head over to fantasychallenge.euroleague.net to uh, to sign up there. If you need any more information, you can head over to uh, euroleague.net as well. So. But yeah, man, it's uh we're coming down to that fourth quarter. It's uh yeah. it's money time. It's money time. We look at the fi- the figures. So Milan is shooting fifty percent from three this game. Um, they've shot six for twelve from the floor from three point. Barcelona's not far off. Fourteen assists for Barcelona, man. That's a huge number right there, as well as the uh, the rebound differential, uh, especially since you, you're knotted up at, at turnovers. You both both teams have 15 turnovers, yeah. so you know the rebounds right that, now is uh mm-hmm. yeah the rebounds right yeah, now is kind of the uh, because a lot of people yeah, don't realize sure. you know when you talk about the game in, in Europe how hard it is to get an assist. That's why when you see guys averaging anywhere between five to seven assists, man, that's that's huge. That's huge. Yeah. Nah, it, it definitely makes a difference. So we're gonna see how it plays out. But real quick, they got the uh the Euroleague GM uh the Euroleague GM surveys are in. So let's uh mm. let's see what we have there. As they uh they talk about Mitzi, most uncomfortable opponent. They said Barcelona, rightfully so. Final four teams. Okay, Real, Barca, Cheska. Cheska's in there. Okay. I like that. Best leader, Nikola Miritic. Best clutch, clutch player, Miritic as well. Hmm. MVP, <laughs> Miritic. I mean, I don't think anybody can argue about that. Which yearly player would you sign? Miritic, Tavares, of course, and Micic. Yeah. Nah, that's uh, that. I just can't argue with nothing there. <clears throat> oh, that was kind of cool, but the fourth quarter is underway. We got a 54-47 game. Let's see. Uh, let's see if Milan can get some offense going. Yeah, it is. It's a great, great, great way to create, man. That's a. It's a. It's a new day, man. Bigs got to be able to put it on the floor and create for uh, for guards sometimes, man. It's a. Uh, this is true. It's definitely uh, adds to your value. <laughs> 
Oh yeah. One hundred percent adds to your value. C. Higgins. C. Higgins been quiet today, man. Let's see what he got. C. Higgins, he only has one point, but he got four assists in uh, 13 minutes. But, you know, regardless, man, it's good to see him back on the floor, man. Once he uh, gets back in rhythm, oh, yeah. man, he's going to be uh, he's gonna be a key piece, man. Five seconds. Oh, that's knocked it out of bounds. Five-point game, 54-49. Okay, okay you on the island. Shoot that. It is. Rebounding in traffic. Yo, how important is it? How important is it to like? So when you look at like a good rebounder, what are some of the things mm -hmm. that you notice? Uh, first thing is uh, constant live legs, what they call it. A guy who's going to constantly mm -hmm. be moving. Um, a guy who seals position and even good rebounders are always going to give a first initial effort. When the ball comes out the room, that first initial effort. But elite rebounders, they have unlimited. So they got to, like mm -hmm. what you just see Dennis Rodman used to do, a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth jump. A guy who's going to have live legs and, and give as many efforts as possible. So that's yeah. that's the key key right there. Yeah, no, nah, I think uh... – yeah, man, I think, you know, the great rebounders that I've seen, man, uh, you know, just guys with motors, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you said, like, ain't going to stop jumping, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And, uh, I think great defenders in general, they all have motors, though. Motors okay. and instincts uh, go a long way, but you need that motor first. Um, oh, yeah. I think that's, that's the most important thing. Former teammates go head to head at the rim here. Mm-hmm. C. Higgs and uh, Kyle Hunt. Yeah, man, I think uh, I think Corey's, Corey's an underrated defender as well, man. Oh, yeah. I've always liked, I especially, agree. man, if you, uh, you know, even going back to that, that semifinal in the Final Four of last year, man, like, you know, he was playing really well defensively. I mean, everybody yeah. was. I mean, when the stakes are that high, everybody's sitting down, but – you know, that's one of the things I love about, you know, your elite basketball is you got five guys defending, giving effort mm -hmm. at all times. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's what uh that's what definitely separates, you know, this brand of basketball from uh from anything else. But yeah. Then when you got those it's electric fans, man, how how you not gonna give an effort? You know what I mean? <laughs> fans going crazy, oh. cheering, oh. screaming oh. loud. See? See? Second effort. Mm. He got it blocked yeah. first. Second. Effort. Right it's back up. Textbook. Textbook. Live legs. Indeed. He's got the block. That's why that, that's why he is who he is. Big fan. That's why he is who he is, man. Nah, that's uh that's tough, man. Now we got a three point game. Armani right back in it. Milano right back in yeah. it. 54 51. We got a <laughs> we got a tight game here. They scrap. Real quick, we got a final score in Bayern Munich. They beat Zalgir 74 to 65. Um, looks like uh, Yarmus was the uh, was the leading scorer of that game. And then, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Fenerbahce defeated Olympiacos 94 to 80. And we have a three point game here with uh, a little under eight minutes to go, or a little under a little more than seven minutes to go. Under eight minutes to go in this game, so let's see. Uh, let's see if Milan can turn this corner here, man. I knew we were gonna have a tight one, though. I knew nobody was gonna just we run need, off with yeah. it. Yeah, this is gonna be definitely down to the wire. No, nah, indeed, indeed, man. Uh, you know, I'm a. I don't usually, I don't usually give handouts, but you know, you want to go back on your prediction right now, or are you gonna, you gonna stand tall. <laughs> You know, what I mean? let me know. Let me know. If you want, you can whisper. You know, you can whisper. You can text me if you want. You know what I mean? I ain't even going to say it on air. You can let me know. All right, peace to my main man, Nipsey Hussle. I'm 10 toes down. I'm 10 toes down. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm with that. I can respect that. I can respect <laughs> that, man. We got a three point game. Right in the Davies. Mm, soft touch. Told you. We talked about yep. that in the beginning. Got good foot, yeah. footwork, soft touch down there. Yeah, man, you gotta give him, gotta give him touches, man. 
I think, yeah. uh, especially in this kind of a game, man, you know, where he has – he has the link. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he's going to be able to finish right over these guys. That move oh, yeah. Hall. I like – Yeah, nah, he sold that one. <laughs> yeah. He sold he yeah. sold that one. <laughs> he sold that one. Yeah, nah, that's that's funny, man. Everybody back home, please let us know who you think is gonna win this game. We got a tight one here, 56-51. Excuse my language, 56-52, as uh Devin Hall just knocks down that free throw. But uh let us know who you guys think are gonna uh come out with this game. Come out with this win as uh, Devin Hall definitely sold a three point foul and uh, he got three freebies, man. But uh, seven minutes, 15 seconds left. I don't see him missing this next free throw. And we have a two point game here in Barcelona. We've got, we've got uh, ourselves a good one. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. There we go. Yeah, I think they. Uh, I think Barcelona got to obviously give Davies the ball when they can down low, but I think also kind of like they just try right there, try to run that run that side pick and roll with Miritich and Higgins, see if you can get mm -hmm. that switch, you know what I'm saying, and then play out of Miritich down low or, you know, with Higgins up top. Um, but I think that with this type, with this particular lineup out here, that's what I'd be looking I, I to agree. do um, to try and punish Milan right now. Kyle and, uh, bringing it up. You know, and and then one thing you were speaking about earlier, though, is, uh, you know, Milan trying to get back, get downhill. And I think, you know, having Delaney out there, you know, that's one thing, you know, mm -hmm. he's been uh, he's been able to do oh, as we speak mm. right on cue. Um, mm. You know, nice driving dish by Delaney, dropping it off to yeah. uh, Kyle Hines. Man. Nice drive. Yeah, I think that's yeah, they, they, I think they, that's they kind of us. been the. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. They. uh they definitely hurt us down there, man. And I think that, you know, Delaney getting downhill has definitely changed things for Milan, man. Getting paint touches. That's great defense by Ben. Mm. That's great defense. <laughs> they defending right now, boy. Yeah, yeah getting foul, after. Bro. See how they scrapping on that rebound? I love it. Yeah. That ball is no, gold. It's definitely fine. You got to get it. It is. You need it. You need it, man. Six minutes left. Yeah. Six minutes left. Both teams need this game. I mean, you got to think about it. Like, you know, being shorthanded, yeah. you know, being able to walk away with a win against a quality team. That's like, huge for morale. It, huge. Oh, for huge. sure. And you think about think about all the games you just remember in your career. You get it down six minutes. Every possession is so important. So mm -hmm. important. Every pass is so important. You know, especially you got to knot it up like this. So important. Yeah. Every position. Yeah, nah, for sure, man. You definitely, uh, you definitely got to slow down and, uh, you know, value these possessions. And, uh, you know, in this point of the game, this is where guys get tired and make mistakes, though. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's a tough shot. It's not the shot you wanted. But... Ooh, good rebound. No? Uh, uh, nah. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh. Yeah, it's definitely going the way, but sweat it. So gonna sweat his suit out. He ready to I'm telling you, man. Oh yeah. It. I wonder how many suits he goes through in a year. Oh man. Countless. <laughs> he's probably man, got the table. You know he's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You already know he's going through his suits like crazy. He's got a yeah, he's got a, definitely needs an endorsement deal with a with a tailor oh, right yeah. here, man. <laughs> For sure. Cause he probably he probably sweats through them, rips them. The threads right. going out, threads are leaking. Like, right. <laughs> you know, what I mean, he's so animated, man. It's a, uh, it's funny. Oh, they caught a foul on that one. That's tough. Kyle Kirish going to the line for three free throws. We knotted up at fifty six, <laughs> five and a half left. And this game is as good as advertised. Ooh. Kyle missed the free throw. Mm, okay. wrong, uncharacteristic miss. Uncharacteristic. Like high 80s. Look, yeah, he's shooting 39 for, yeah, 88, 88%. Oh. Yeah, I knew, I knew it was somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you don't expect those misses. 
But like you said, man, every bucket, every possession, every free throw, it all counts once you once you get to that that last six, five, six minutes of the, uh, of the game. Yeah. Everything counts, man. And then, I mean, look at the valuable minutes. You know, Yoku Bidis is getting, you know, this late in the uh, – this late in a tough game. Yeah. As Delaney hits a big three pointer. Sheesh. Baltimore Delaney hit a strong. big one. Man. Oof. Love to see it. 59 58. Milan's up. Tough. Man, look at the young fella, though, right back. Wow. <laughs> the young fella, right wow. back. Yoko hey, Bodies man, has no memory at all, bro. Like uh, we I talked about him earlier. Game. He's tough. He got man. heart. He got heart. Big heart. It's like, man, come flying in for the rebound. He was pressing Delaney on that on that hedge right there, and he come flying in for that yeah. rebound after hitting the big three. It's like little plays like that. You really get to see the player. You know exactly. what I'm saying? You don't. Know, you don't see them in the sheet. Uh-uh. Man, that effort, man, is man, it's cold. And I think, yeah. I think as a uh as a veteran, you know what I mean, you're able to trust the, a young, a young fella like that, even if he makes a mistake or two, because you know mm-hmm. he's gonna play hard, he's gonna get it back, and he's not gonna get flustered because he gets scored on or whatever it is. He's gonna right. come back and he's gonna play the right way, man. And I think that's why, you know. Sarunas is, is able to to trust him late in the game, and as well as his uh, as well as his uh, the players, the vets on the team, you know, I agree. are able to trust him, you know, as well, man. And I think another thing too is dope is just that you know, Sarunas even trusts him to be on the floor. You know, a lot of coaches like you know, it's hard for them to trust young guys, you know, to go out there and play. But, this is true. You know, you gotta kind of give them that that freedom to make mistakes for them to learn and yeah. and earn your trust. Give them you a little, I mean? little leash, a little leeway, and let them earn, you mm-hmm. know, earn their keep, so to speak. But like you say, taking a risk and and, and giving them that opportunity. Yeah. And I, and as a player, that fuels you with confidence because you feel like, okay, coach is gonna rock with me. Give me a shot. Right. Let me make the best of this. Let me show him that his yeah. trust is, is validated. You know, it's like a continuum almost. Oh, yeah, for sure, man. And I think that, you know, it's that's why I say that this kid's career is going to is going to go through the roof, man, because uh, I mean, just being able to have that trust and that ability. I mean, can you imagine, you know, at 21 years old, you know, playing in this level of a game, you know, that type yeah. of thing. You know what I mean? Just, and I'm not even talking yeah. about skill wise, but emotionally, emotionally, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like highs and lows, that's what the, uh, mm-hmm. oh, that's a big block. Big Jeez. shot, Chacho. It's a man. big shot, man. But uh, yeah, just emotionally, man, just dealing with the highs and lows, man, it's, uh, it's tough playing basketball at that age at this level yeah because you think about most europeans um at his age are not playing in this game <laughs> yeah and yeah you know, at this level so just that mental for sure uh-huh oh good cut yeah it was a good cut man but we have a we got a we got a replay of that yoku bite three-pointer we're going to check out. His way into it after a slow start. He's up to nine points now. Jokobaitis. He'll try the three, and he'll make the three. Quick response to Malcolm Delaney. Yeah, see, he, uh, he knocked that down, but, yeah, man, my man uh, Delaney's playing well. We got, we got some, uh, we got some, and you know what's you know what's crazy is like, okay, we got you know Delaney playing well, and you know everybody's you know kind of pitching in. Yoku Bates, he only has eleven points, but it's like the timeliness of the buckets. You know what mm-hmm. I mean, Delaney. You know with you know with Delaney's buckets, like he's playing well. He has twelve points, but it's the timeliness of those twelve it's, points. It's the man. win, Miritich, Yeah, man. 
another big bucket by Meritage, man. And like, you know, we down three three minutes left and we got this tie game. You know what I mean? Right. Not Guys are making big plays. Guys are making big plays, man. And this is what you pay the guys. Lane's back in his bag now. Big time players make big time plays. Oh, for sure. It's a great, great drive by Chacho, man. Ooh. Found Melly. Found Melly down low. It's a good drive. Dunker spot. That's how they teach you. Got to hang around there. Got to hang around there, man. We got to. After that timeout, we got Milan 67-65. We got a tight one, ladies and gentlemen. Man, it's been uh, this game yes, has do. been as good as advertised. I see. Uh, I see. We got some. Uh, we got some. Uh, we got some fans in there. Some people telling Barca to wake up. Uh, right. Somebody says, "Come to Zastal, Ghani." I'm not sure what Zastal is. Wow, uh, that's my first yeah. team ever I played for when I was in Europe. They're a VTB team out in Poland. John Lagura. Okay. Oh, okay, 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 league. okay. Because Elon Lagura, yeah. okay. Yeah, Stelman, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, he, he says, yeah, he says They have a pretty back good fan base, too. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, I played in that gym before. I played in that gym yeah. before. Yeah, not nah, yeah. Green and white? Yep. Yeah, okay. yeah, and then Arif says, "Come on, Milan." So, yeah, let us know who y'all think gonna win this game, man. We got a two point game here. I'm standing on Barcelona. Ghani's riding with Milan. Let us know who y'all think gonna win this game as we uh, coming down. We got a we got a couple minutes left in this game here, man. Um, so, what you think? Uh, what you think Barcelona is gonna do out of this timeout here? Let's put our coaches uh, hat on. Um, I'm thinking they go a young fella, man. You know, put him in a top top screen role and make let him make a decision. I mean, he's he's got it going. Okay. I know he's I know he's young, but <laughs> yeah, he's been he's been killing. He's been making good decisions yeah. though. Yeah, yeah he's let him make a decision, good decisions. coming up a pick and roll, and you know, get into the mix a little bit. Yeah, so, nah, obviously. for sure. Oh, that's a good screen. Oh, I didn't oh, mismatch. Oh, they let him play. Because remember that first that, that play uh, in the first half they call offensive. See, as a big, yeah, I like yeah. that. You know, you yeah, know, you know that's mouse in the house. You come down here if you want yeah. to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, I'm going to yeah. make you regret it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you going to feel something. to do right there. Right. Yeah. No, nah, that's a fact. You know, they got eight seconds, two minutes, ten, ten, ten seconds left. Eight yeah. seconds on the shot clock. Two point game. They've been running Curich off a lot of screens in the last possession or two. A young fella works on. Yeah, three, two. Tough. Mm. Got the rebound though. Mm, gotta get the rebound. Yeah. Gotta board it. Gotta board it. Got to. Go. Got to. Got to. Cha cha on the push. Up strong. Yeah, that's good. That's good action. Wow. Yeah, yeah ben got a minute fifty left. Mm-hmm. He he he's been solid all night, man. He's been solid all night. Oh man. yeah. Oh no, he's been he, he's low key he's low key been like an X factor, man. Because yeah, I mean he man. had a really big first half when things were slow. He had a really big first half. I think he had all his uh, his points in the first half, four rebounds, and uh, yeah. he has he has four steals. He got four steals in yeah. the game. So, you know, I think that. Uh, you know he's definitely uh, he's definitely put his hand in this game. Uh, yeah, he's he's left he missed the free throw sure. there. Got to knock the yeah, next nah, one. Yeah, he's uh, he's got to knock the next one down. 65-67, Ben Bento at the free throw line. Got a minute and fifty left, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how this one plays out. Let us know who y'all think gonna win this game. All right, think you got to get Miritich involved, man. Run that side pick and roll, man. Yeah. See if you can get him on a switch or something, or get him on a get him on a cross screen post up on that on that left block. He seems okay. comfortable. Okay, they on try that to block. they try to run a down screen mm-hmm. handoff. I like that action. That is so mm-hmm. tough for a big to guard. A big's not used it to is. guarding that down screen down screen handoff. Hey. Hey, look, he ran through the he ran through the guard. Hey. <laughs> You're not used to guarding that's, that as a big. Hey, that's funny business for us. That's true. That's funny business for us. <laughs> I, I mean, it's tough like for that. a guard to guard. 
Right. That's well, tough for a guard to guard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tough, yeah. like, because you got to figure out what to do on the down screen and then the handoff. Yeah, you got to make a choice. Man, it, you got to make a choice. That's tough. My mom might. But that's the value in having them. Let's see if this, who's this? Oh, that looked like it went off his knee. Yeah. That looked like it went off Meritage's knee right there. Are they going to review it? All right, cool. Yeah, that's what Ben was arguing. He was like, man, that went off Meritage's yeah. knee. Okay, so if it's a minute and a half left, Milan should have the ball after this uh, review. Three-point game, 65-68. Mm-hmm. Milan's up. Okay, what can Milan run? I'm kind of letting Delaney. I'm kind of letting Delaney get loose. Uh, I'm a, yeah. I'm, I'm probably gonna Delaney run some action. A, yeah, I'm a floppy action. Go. Let him come off a floppy, and mm-hmm. maybe a top screen, or let him do a top screen and a back pin, a Spanish. So that way, yeah, yeah, can, yeah. He can read. Oh, you got the big yeah, man. Spanish. You can do a board. Spanish with a uh, with Chacho. You can probably do a Spanish with Chacho yeah. with Devin Hall for sure. That too. I'll probably do it with Chacho just in case things break down and then Chacho got space up top to kind of create. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like that. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I like that. Yeah, nah, that will be a that will be a good call. But I mean, Delaney's he's already hit a couple buckets. You know, he's been feeling it this quarter, so you definitely yeah. want you want to get Delaney a touch coming out of this. Uh, Coming out of this mm-hmm. uh, this review, if you can, if it's if it is indeed Milan's ball, but uh, yeah, man, three point game. If they could get this bucket, that'll be huge, man. With like a with a minute and some change left, everybody back home. Thanks for joining us. Let in, let us know who y'all think is gonna win this game. We got a three point game right now, sixty eight, sixty five. They're reviewing the uh, the out of bounds call right here. Ben Bensel knocked it off of uh, knocked it out of Miritich's hand, and they're seeing if it went off of Miritich's knee or not. So, you know, we're gonna see what happens there. But uh, let us know who y'all uh, who y'all think is gonna win this game. If y'all got any quick questions for Ghani before this game is uh, is over, please leave them in the comments. And uh, yeah, here we are with a minute thirty five left. Let's see what they run. Look like Melly's gonna get it right back to. Uh, Sergio. I'm also to see interested to see the matchups. Who's guarding mm-hmm. who? And see yeah, if they try to too. exploit something there. See if they try to exploit something there. Yeah, they put Hayes Day they put Hayes Davis on, on Surge. You get that long body on him. Yeah. Those long arms. With an athleticism. Mm-hmm. Are well, they trying to punish the uh Okay. Serge got a kick out. Mm. Bucket. Pump mm. fake bucket. Devin Hall. Straight out of Devin the Hall. Hall. That's tough. Drills. That's a cone drill right there. <laughs> straight out of drill. We call that drill work. Oh, that's a tough bucket, man. 65 to 70. Milan is up. That is a huge bucket. Huge bucket. Milan's up 65 to 70. And here we are moving. Uh, it'll be Barcelona's ball coming at the end of this timeout. Let's see, man. Yeah, they definitely solo. Like, last time they were running Curich off of some off of some screens. I would not be surprised if they run that same action again for Miritich. That down screen no, hand off. You're going to you gonna have to switch it. You're going to have to switch Right. Yeah, I would run it back for sure. Yeah. I'm for sure running that back because I don't. I don't believe. I don't believe there's a big man that really wants to guard that or that can guard that. With that with a guy that can shoot it that well, you know what I mean? Because right. you got to stay attached. You know what I'm saying? So you have to. Yeah, man. It's a. Uh, yeah, it's tough, man. And uh, everybody back home, if you're watching this, you can go back and watch this. Uh, watch along on demand on Euroleague's YouTube channel. Uh, as soon as we're done, you can watch it from start to finish. Uh, it's been a great conversation, a lot of great stories, and some uh, some great insight and basketball talk you definitely don't want to miss. So don't forget to uh, come back and uh, watch this game with us. But, uh, yeah, let's see what they're going to do off this uh, sideline out of bounds. Yeah, I see they switched the matchup on Miritich now. They got Melly on uh, yeah. Miritich. Okay, they switched early. They look like they might have pre-switched. Real quick in the Davies. Mm-hmm. That's a tough 
bucket. B. Davies is nice down there, man. Hey, footwork. Man, you got to let him work. Yeah, they need to go to him more this game. I'm telling you, man. You got to let him work. You're trying to get on and punish that switch. Let big no, fella give get him it. the ball. Yeah. Go on, punish that switch, man. Let big fella get a touch. They got the foul. Okay. Devin Hall to the free throw line. So Devin Hall got fouled on the kick out drive. 67 70. We got a three point game. Devin, Hall, Devin Hall is at the uh, free throw line. He's going to be shooting two free throws. 43 seconds left. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's see if Devin Hall is he going to uh, knock both of these down or not. Yo, you ever had to win a game at the free throw line? I've been in that situation. I've won some, I've lost some. I'll be mad enough to yeah. submit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, nah, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough, man. I think the these biggest are, thing these is some tough free throws. Yeah, your routine, you know, and not letting the, the moment nah. get too much. And just relaxing. I mean, you yeah. look at, like, Devin Hall, great shooter. You know, he misses a free throw late in the game, man. Right. Just got to relax, you know what I mean? You just got to relax. Is, ironically, like we talked about it. Okay. Well, yeah. like we oh, talked the shot clock probably looks like. Yeah, Barcelona has lost, I think, two, three in a row. So the advantage for Milan is if they could just hang around long enough and and the, and the psyche is to start to press. Because you got to know Cyrus mm -hmm. has been on their tail, their heads the last few yep. uh, days. So because if they yep. lose this, this will be four in a row between domestic and Euroleague. Yeah. So I think Milan has the psychological yeah. advantage if they could, you know, get a stop this possession. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And uh, let's see what the they got here. Dang. Oh, that's a big bucket. Ooh, Sheesh. Big bucket. Man. Kyle Kirsch with the tray ball. 70 to 71. 34 seconds left. Let's get it. Kyle Kirsch, yeah, man. <laughs> He, uh, man. I'm telling you, man, he's Mr. Efficient. Mr. Efficient, man. Like, he is, golly. He's having a, he's having a great off. game. Man. Got 22 points right now. In 20, 22 points in 25 minutes, man. Four, he's shooting 9 for 10 from the field. Mm -hmm. Mr. Efficient. Okay, we got 20 seconds left. One point game. Chacho with the ball up top. See what they got here. They got the switch. Okay. Delaney. Delaney Ooh. with the big bucket. Delaney with the big bucket, baby. That might be it, ladies and gentlemen. That might be it, ladies and gentlemen. Delaney with the huge bucket. <laughs> Miritich. Miritich. Right Bruh. back. Rich is right back. You got a foul, baby. 73-74. 4.9 seconds left. Nicolo Melli got fouled going to the free throw line. Dang. This, this is high level. This is high it level. is, man. Back and forth. Delaney with a huge bucket. And Mirich is right back at him. Dang. Okay. Oh, they, they got a foul to give. Or hmm. they got a foul to give or they shooting free throws here. Uh I see they're drawing something up. Oh yeah, it's free throws. Saruna's drawing something up. Like he might just be uh they might just roll with it. They might just roll with it. Okay, two free throws, Nicolo Melli. Got to knock them both down. Got to knock them both down. Oh, mm. missed one. Missed one. Okay, 73-74. Melli missed the first one. 4.9 seconds. Let's see, what, uh, let's see what they can get here. If he can knock this down. They got to get out and run. He makes it. 
Let's see if Barcelona can make this uh this last heave. Ah, oh, you missed it. And that's the uh that's the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. That's Milan escapes. Milan escapes a close Barca one drops. on the road. That's a that's a huge, a huge row. loss. Barcelona loses another game, man, at the house. 75-73. Man, that was a uh that was a tough, tough game, man. Who's uh who's your MVP? I gotta go with Delaney, man. He had some, yeah, some big, timely. big shots. Timely, man. Finished with 15 points, man, but it's like they all Chacha came. Was good too. No, nah, Chacho was good. Yeah, Chacho finished with 18, but uh Delaney had a had a key 15 points in that uh in that uh in that second in that second half and uh Barcelona's unbeaten home run home run comes to an end. But uh man, two great teams and you know I got a feeling we'll both be seeing them at the uh, at the end of the season. So uh um, oh yeah. Nah, but it was uh yeah. big win for Milan. Yeah. Not having their full clip going on the road <clears throat> to still win that the block run and like man, that's yeah. I remember that feeling, man. My my, my first year in Milan, we, we got a win in Barcelona, man. I think they only lost one that year, and it's just a good feeling anytime, no matter where it is. Domestic, yearly, yeah. like winning a road is, is big for the morale because it's hard to win on the road anywhere. Oh, for sure, for sure. Nah, it definitely uh, it definitely speaks volumes, man. But I appreciate you stopping by, man, chopping it up with us on the watch along. Thanks man. for having me. It's been uh, it's been great. <laughs> Yeah, not nah, for sure, it. man. Best of luck with your season, man. You know, continue Appreciate to stay it, healthy, man. man. Keep keep racking up them double doubles. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. And, uh, you oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? It's uh, just do what you do, baby. You already know. Okay. But I appreciate Thanks you uh, stopping me, right? by, man. For sure. Nah, no doubt. And everybody we're back home, please. Time, like... man, I enjoy myself. Yeah, we're gonna have to run that back, man. We're gonna have to run that back, <laughs> man, for sure, man. But uh, everybody back home, please like and subscribe to the Euroleague YouTube channel. We uh, will be back this Friday. We have uh, we'll have another game coming up this Friday, so please don't forget to tap in with us here. But uh, as always, everybody, thanks for watching. Stay tuned with us, and everybody, be safe. And we're out.